all the talking? seminars this morning. Yeah. 540,000, it ends up with about a million. It's about a million, it's over a million dollars in that kitty. I hope you had it. We'll start it right after this. National Charts Weekly, the essential tool for multi-track handicappers. Weekly charts from seven major tracks, North American and European stakes recaps, a week in review editorial, a convenient horse index, and more. From daily racing form, of course. Order your subscription today. Call 1-800-283-2459. The National Charts Weekly. It pays to know the score. 90 miles from New York City, there's an entire world like you've never seen before. The Concord Resort Hotel, Championship Golf, Indoor and Outdoor Tennis, Live Entertainment with the biggest names in show business, a million activities just for the kids, and much, much more. So leave your world behind and lose yourself in ours for a while. The Concord Resort Hotel. For reservations, call 1-800-CONCORD. Carry over in Stanley is 340,000. However, the total pool today was over a million dollars. Open today, two and a 16, steeple chase, three and up. Hallelujah, I'm a bum is still the leader. Cold Beauty right there. Brian Station cuts the corner off the cup on the outside. Two Ridley is coming on and Texan Tycoon. There's six of them that can win it. There's 200 yards from the wire and one more fence to go. Brian Station, hallelujah, I'm a bum. Brian Station grabs the lead. Hallelujah, I'm a bum is trying to fight back. In between horses, Cold Beauty coming hard. Could here's two Ridley by them all on the outside. Two Ridley wins. Harvey, sometimes it pays to have the sharp horse with a race over the course rather than have the classier rivals. Two Ridley gets it. There was a DQ in the second slot moving up Cold Beauty. Two Ridley, Jack Fisher, Sean Clancy. 623-4280, placed second. Number eight, Cold Beauty, 580-340. Number two was third. That's Star Bryan Station, 280 to show. The exact of five and eight, $39. Here's the second today. This is a mile and a 16th over the Mellon Turf course, made in Philly, two year olds. By two and a half lengths. Duke Forest caught wide as they come into the stretch. Noble Pursuit is right there, and here comes Noble Pursuit. Quickly now on the outside, and up from the inside, a run for your money, and Rose Law Firm. Rose Law Firm into dramatic contention on the far outside. Rose Law Firm, a short lead, a run for your money. Noble Pursuit in between them. It's Rose Law Firm coming down to the line with the lead, a length and a half, a run for your money, and Noble Pursuit. Rose Law Firm by almost two. Well, you didn't miss much early on anyway, because it was most of these races, the best running is going to be done late. Trainer Billy Boniface didn't have a lot of luck with Irish Forever in the stakes, but comes right back here today. Well, Rose Law Firm, a friend of mine, told me she's better bred for turf than dirt, and this is the turf. Kenny Warfield Jr., William Boniface, Jorge Chavez, 35, 20, 10, 46, 40. Noble Pursuit, 340, 340. A run for your money, 880. Exacta 56, 144, 80. Quinella 5665, $59. The double here, this is the first double, the old 55102. On to the third. This is five furlongs. He's a maiden filly, two-year-olds, and it begins the big carryover. And they're off. Ice Classic going right on after the early lead. Toward the inside, Terrace Flame is hard ridden, and there goes Verdant Valley up toward the lead on the outside. Ice Classic and Verdant Valley going at it head to head. Terrace Flame is running in third. Lil Mary Sunshine is fourth. Smooth Edge now moving from fifth. Naval Pride sixth toward the inside. Vice Lady is seventh. Petite Anne is eighth, an American star. And the trailer is Shawnee Legend. Around the far turn, Ice Classic going head to head with Verdant Valley. Just in behind, Terrace Flame is right there. Smooth Edge is coming, but has to come four or five wide as they move into the stretch. Vice Lady is coming up and opening toward the inside, and Little Mary Sunshine. At the top of the stretch, it's Ice Classic, full out to hold on to a short lead. She's been battling the whole way with Verdant Valley. Terrace Flame is running in third. Then on the far outside, Smooth Edge at the 16th pole. Ice Classic fending them off. Ice
Race Classic coming home with a three-length lead. Smooth Edge gets up for second, Burden Valley third. Ice Classic may not have been good enough to win at Houston, Harvey, but she shifts up here for the red-hot Neil Howard, who improves his record at the meet for four for nine. Uh, the second finisher, Smooth Edge, had a bit of a wide trip to this Lucas trainee. Came out with blinkers, ran very professionally, but was no match. You're alive with this. You're okay. That's Ice Classic. Will Farris to Weber Jr., Neil Howard. This is the third race, incidentally, and the winner is number seven, Ice Classic. Uh, that's it. Number seven, Ice Classic, Neil Howard and Robbie Davis. 21, 8, 20, 480. The hot first of Smooth Edge, 440, 340. Number nine, Verdant Valley, third, six dollars to show. Exact to 7, 8, 80, 160. The second double, the old 5, 7, 308, 6. Gonna pick up the fourth near the stretch. It's a mile and eight, three and up, claiming tags 25 down to 20. Electrojet and Sylvester Stone are on even terms as they come to the top of the stretch. Established lie between horses running in fourth. Two wise toward the inside is fifth. Red Scamper has tailed off as the field turns for home with the Electrojet with a short lead. Sylvester Stone is battling back bravely on the inside. Two wise is on the attack. Red Scamper is fourth. Electrojet life and death to hold on to the lead. Here comes two wise to get by the favorite. It's two wise in front. Electrojet second. As Sylvester Stone is third. It's an upset here at 16 to 1. Two wise by two and a half. Electrojet. Scott Casper Moshera had this race over the battle with a two ply entry. Electrojet on the pace and Red Scamper from off the pace. Red Scamper, the old pro, came out, washed out, didn't fire a lick. And what we have here is two wise. Turf to dirt has never won. Going nine furlongs around two turns until right now. Harvey. When Electrojet was good, though, he liked to come off the pace, not get into terrible speed duels, which buried him here. But two wise, Mr. Chavez is aboard. That should change things. John Civita, Joe, John Gamelli, Joe Acalino, Jorge Chavez. 35-6-280. Electrojet holds on to 22-10. And number eight, Sylvester Stone, 240. 3-1 is 76-40. The Quinella, 1-3-3-1, 19-20. Show your colors with the Mets MasterCard from Chemical Bank. If you have one, use it. If not, call 1-800-233-METS to apply. What does it mean when we say Sports Channel is in the game? It means we cover the Mets from every angle. It would have been a devastating loss. It was a mistake pitch for him. Oh, no, Jeff Kent. A little windy, guys, above Waveland Avenue here. I don't think I could hit the way I was hitting before. Padilla puts the hammer on this one. With the Mets, Islanders, Devils, and Mets, Sports Channel is in the game. Here's the fifth today. This is five furlongs again. These are Maiden Philly, two-year-olds, number six Flanders, first of three to five. And they're off. Jovial Joust comes out in stride and gets the jump on them quickly. And Rain Dance was taken up soon after the start, and the rider has lost the irons on Rain Dance. Quickly, there goes Day by Day by Day, right past Jovial Joust. Now to take the lead, share the fun, is running in third. Flanders, up close fourth, then a break of about five lengths to misconduct, followed by Rain Dance. Jockey's still having a tough time with that one. Our wildest dreams toward the inside. Maria Rosa is far behind the rest. Coming to the top of the stretch, here comes the favorite Flanders. Flanders revving up three wide to put ahead in front as they turn for home. Jovial Joust, day by day by day, has dropped back into third. Share the fun is fourth on the outside, coming to the eighth pole. Pat Day hand riding Flanders to the lead. By a length, Jovial Joust on the inside, second. Day by day is third. And find the back, share the fun is now fourth. Flanders coming home to an easy win here, no doubt about it. 
Flanders by six emphatic lengths. Jovial just was second. Obviously, the reason we come to Saratoga, this seeking the gold filly was very impressive. Uh, seeking the golds get, incidentally, a winning first time out at about a 33% rate. Uh, this filly, would, you could see here, Pat Day with the stick down, accomplishes her last furlong in 12, just playing around. And look at the stride on her. This is a good filly. William T. Young, D. Wayne Lucas got themselves a good one here. Pat Day won with this one. The other one, as you know, finished second in the third race. 320, 280, 260 for Flanders, finishing second, day by day by day, 760, 460, and third number, I'm sorry, Jovial, Jovial Joust, and third number one, Share the Fun, 360. The 6 8 exact is 35 40. Here's the six. This is a sprint four and up, claiming tag 75 to 70. Running in third, then Golden Tent and Fabersham. Mining Borough, hard pressed through a torrid first quarter. 21 and four fifth seconds. Mining Borough gets out there now by three. Church Key was steadied going into the turn. Now back running in second. Cody's Key put to a drive, now running in third. Fabersham and Golden Tent both about seven lengths from the lead. And the leader still Mining Borough, who turns for home in front by four, but the others are closing in. Cody's Key is coming hard on the outside. Golden Tent is coming up the fence. And Mining Borough a drill to half in 45 seconds flat with a host of pursuers chasing him to the eighth pole. Golden Tent is coming hard in between horses as Mining Burrow weakens. Fabersham on the outside at the 16th pole. Fabersham, Golden Tent, Mining Burrow tired third. Golden Tent, Fabersham, here's the line. Heads bobbing on the wire. Harvey with Church Key and Mining Burrow in here. One thing you knew is that the pace would be hot. You want something from off the pace. The difference probably was Richard Migliori saving ground on the turn with Golden Tent, who's just going to hang a nose, as you can see, on the late finishing Fabergen. Well, he's riding for Gene Hammond and Barry Schwartz. My question, the trainer, Migliori, probably those good dinners at Barry's house. And Golden Tent returns 643, 240. Second, Fabergen, 280, 220. Third, number five, Mining Burr, 280 to show. The six ones, 1560. We'll wrap up the pick three with seven furlongs, three and up. Now one is a three other than then. Arrival time, Jerry Bailey, Dream Prosperous, Robbie Davis, Ledford, Mike Smith, Abel Buck Chavez, Apprentice, Shane Sellers, Famous Fan, Pat Day, Jamiano, Perrette, Birdies Fly is out, Tactical Advantage, Santos, Recorder, Maple. Famous fan bounces out quickly. Abel Buck is also right there. Toward the outside, tactical advantage, Gemiano. And here's arrival time. Up the back stretch in a three-way scrimmage for the lead. Abel Buck, famous fan, and arrival time down on the inside. He's got ahead in front now. Gemiano is up close, disputing the pace in fourth position. Dream Prosperous, well in hand, fifth, and moving on the inside. Apprentice is running in mid-pack. On the far outside, Recorder now beginning to launch his bid. And in between horses, tactical advantage, Ledford is last as they continue their run up the back stretch. The quarter, 23 seconds flat. Heading into the far turn, Abel Buck now taking a short lead. Arrival time, though, is still right there with him. Famous fan, the gray, kept close third. Jamiano continues to dispute the pace while on the far outside. Dream Prosperous running in fifth position, and Apprentice takes to the outside for his bid, and here he comes. By the back, Ledford and tactical advantage. They ran a half and 46 seconds flat, and Abel Buck is put to a drive as they turn for home. And Abel Buck is opening up now by two and a half lengths. Jamiano is second on the outside. Famous fan is working hard down toward the inside and third. Apprentice is coming with his final run on the outside. He's got to catch Abel Buck, who has a four-length lead and less than 100 yards to run. Apprentice has moved into second, but no catching Abel Buck today. Sharp in victory. Four lengths clear on the what? Apprentice was second, Jamiano third. Racing last night, Richie O'Connell was talking about horses that just seem to love Saratoga. Here's one, Abel Buck. Since he came up here after Belmont closed, he's been the training star here. Gary Contesta's had him in about four or five different spots. He finally settled on today. This is the result. And Gary Contesta and the Windbound Farm people always eating at Luna's. That conference down at Belmont probably resulted in this. <laughs> Abel Buck, Windbound Farm, Gary Contesta, Chavez again. 1025, 460. Second apprentice, 363. Third number seven, Jamiano, 540. Four five exact is 4360. The pick three, 664, 76 
the Daily Racing Form Thoroughbred Action. Brought to you by the Daily Racing Form, America's turf authority for 100 years running. If you want to play at the track, you've got to get Playing to Win, the all-new, fun-to-watch, easy-to-understand handicapping video from America's Turf Authority Daily Racing Forum. Host Bob Newmeyer takes you inside the track, talks to key players, and shows you how the pros pick their winners. Past performances, speed figures, workout patterns, and breeding angles are just a few of the helpful handicapping tips that can really pay off. Playing to Win will take you to the front. Call 1-800-208-4333 today to order your very own copy. RCA Home Theater comes with a new optimum contrast screen a black of blacks brilliant whites and a picture so clear and bright you'll feel like you're really there see the RCA Home Theater TVs at all Trader Horn locations End of the Saratoga meet will spotlight the nation's best three-year-old fillies in the grade one Alabama. Heading the field, Lakeway. She took the mother goose at Belmont, then went west to capture the Hollywood Oaks in stakes record time. Saturday's card will also feature a simulcast of the Pacific Classic from Del Mar. On Sunday, fillies and mares will battle on the grass in the always competitive Diana Handicap. And you'll have a chance to win cash without making a bet. $50,000 will be given away with 100 fans winning $500. So make your plans next week to be at Saratoga, the summer place to be. Here's the eighth from Island Five Base over the Melon Turf course. Three year olds and up is an overnight handicap. Passer will try to get to the early lead, but on the outside, it's Pascagani, the quickest from the gate, and Pascagani is up to take charge in the early going. Turk Passer now concedes the lead to Pascagani. Glanville runs along in third. On the inside, nonpartisan is saving ground in the early going. Senior Tomas is three wide round the first turn. London Lime is in between horses. Master McGrath is hard held there by Filiberto Leon. Then heavy rain toward the inside, followed by Corentino, who's muzzled at the back of the pack, along with Asser Shea. Making the turn into the stretch for the first time, Pascagani comes a bit wide, indeed well out into the center of the course. Julie Crone trying to settle him down on the lead. Turk Passer is right there, down on the fence, running in second. Glanville third, then toward the inside, nonpartisan tucked away in fourth. Then Linden Line, Senior Tomas, a break of four to heavy rain, and Master McGrath, Corentino second to last. Asser Shea continues to trail the field. Pascagani uh, raced well off the rail as they came by us for the first time, but now has moved over to the inside and still maintains a two-length lead over Turk Passer, still running in second, nonpartisan third toward the inside. The half and 47 and four, three quarters and 12 flat. Honest fractions here for Pascagani, the leader by length. There's room at the inside for Turk Passer as Crone comes off the rail once again. Nonpartisan running in third. Senior Thomas on the outside, clear of traffic fourth. For the inside, Linden Lime. Then a break of six back to Glanville. Master McGrath, Quarantino now being nudged along. Asser Shea is beginning to move up now from the back of the pack, about 15 lengths from the front. The trailer is heavy rain. The field moving into the fire turn. There's less than a half mile from the line. Pascagani has led throughout Turk Passer has been tracking second most of the way. Then a break of four and a half back to Linden Lime. Nonpartisan on the outside around the far turn. Pascagani with something left. Pascagani now opens up by two, letting it out a notch. Turk Passer still pursuing second. Linden Lime called on for his best now third. Then farther back, nonpartisan retreats, followed by senior Tomas as the field turns for home. Pascagani trying to go the distance on the lead. Full out past the eighth pole, drifting once again to the center 
center of the course. Turk Passer coming hard on the inside, and Lyndon Lime is in between them. Turk Passer on the fence, Pascagani on the outside. Lyndon Lime battles away in between them. Here's the wire, and Turk Passer gets there first. Lyndon Lime. This three time around prep for the Seneca handicap coming up turned out to be an interesting tactical race. Uh, Pescagani, <laughs> way out in the middle of the track with Crone Tirauch. He did that successfully last year with a horse in Mott. This didn't work out too well as Turk Passer, who didn't care for the off ground in the sword dancer, saves ground every step under Velasquez and shows his class late. And a bowling green, a winner of the bowling green handicap and an overnight's going to pay a good price. The reason? Let's look at the pick six when it comes in. It might be part of it. Michael Shanley, Leonard Levine, Stephen Weiss, Tony Margotta, the trainer, John Velasquez up, Turk Passer, three to one in the morning line, not out of proportion, maybe four, five to one, no more, returns 20, 20, 8, 20, and 460. Second, Linden Lime, $463. And the third horse was the rather bad act of the nine, Pescagani, 320. The exact of 4-3 is $100.60. Two winners, both here in Saratoga. Each one received 540000 plus. We are told that one of them involves the people with Turk Passer, or the, at least with Tony Margotta. The other, the rumor says, a little old lady for $48. Five of six, 200 tickets, $1,169. And now we're on to our stake race for the day. This is the uh, 79th running of the Adirondack, $100,000 rated grade two, six and a half furlongs, two-year-old fillies. Changing ways, Perrette, phone bird, Pat Day, Susan's Choice, Alvarado, a valor lady, Julie Crone, the favorite is Seeking Regina, Jerry Bailey. Pointed one, Mike Smith, Miss Wild is out, clever thing, Luzzy. And they're off. Clever Thing stumbled coming out of the starting gate. Down toward the inside, Phone Bird up after the lead. Appointed one is also right there. And at the rail, it's Changing Ways. It's Phone Bird who takes the early lead. Changing Ways to her inside. Moving up now into second to secure her position on the inside. Appointed one is running in third. Valor Lady now on the inside running in fourth. And the favorite, Seeking Regina, is fifth. About five and a half lengths from the lead. Then Clever Thing, Susan's Choice at the back of the pack. 21 and four for the opening quarter. Torrid fractions here and Changing Ways has come on to take the lead. It's Changing Ways in front now. There goes a pointed one revving up on the outside second as Phone Bird tails off into third. Valor Lady is fourth toward the inside. Here comes Seeking Regina who switched to the far outside for the run into the stretch. The half mile went in 45 flat. Seeking Regina with a five wide sweep toward the leaders. Changing Ways is down on the rail. Phone Bird Valor Ladies in tight on the inside. Coming to the eighth pole, seeking Regina, bearing in, but now has a head in front. Changing ways is second. Valor Lady still pinned down. 16th pole, seeking Regina, pulling away. It's seeking Regina now by three. Then changing ways and foam bird, seeking Regina, gets there by four. Last time Leroy Jolly was in the winner's circle with the stakes horse in Saratoga, was in the spinaway with Meadow Star in 1990. Long time between dreams. But this is a seeking the gold filly. It's got a bright future. She wins and draws off from these by four lengths, Avi, without even changing over to a correct lead. Unfortunately for the people with the Valor Lady, that horse got trapped on the inside and changing ways with a big change of pace. Speed tried today it was a very good second. Seeking Regina, Kentucky Blue Stables, Eddie Sitt, Leroy Jolly, and Jerry Bailey. If you'd seen her first two races, you'd know why she paid 382 62 20. Changing ways, 282. 240, phone bird 340, exacta 511060, the triple 512, $50. Now we're on to the 10th race. This is seven furlongs, maidens three and up. Exclusive Casino Maple, facetious Buck Luttrell, Ariston is out. Chris's Rainbow, Jerry Bailey. Balls Bluff, Craig Perrette. Silver Fox is a firster with a bar shoe on. That's the favorite. Margotta Trains, Jose Santos. Fleet Stalker, Mike Smith. April Christmas, John Velasquez. Bigger than Paris, Shane Sellers. Count on Broadway, Alvarado. Aqua Santa, Robbie Davis, Walsh, Pat Day. And they're off. 
Con on Broadway gets out early. April Christmas is also there, along with Bigger Than Paris, Fleet Stalker, an exclusive casino on the inside. Up the backstretch, April Christmas has a short lead. Exclusive casino is right there on the inside. Second and Fleet Stalker is stalking, running third. Bigger Than Paris, fourth. Chris's Rainbow is fifth. Ball's Bluff is sixth and between horses. Con on Broadway is now seventh. Walsh on the far outside is now running in eighth position. Toward the inside, that's uh, Silver Fox, and near the back of the pack are Aqua Santa. The trailer is Facetious Buck. April Christmas dueling with Exclusive Casino through a brisk first quarter of 22 and three-fifth seconds. Ball's Bluff on the move now on the outside. Then far the back, it's Con on Broadway, fourth on the extreme outside. Chris's Rainbow is fifth toward the rail. Fleet Stalker is retreated now to sixth. Then it's bigger than Paris. Walsh is launching a bit from far back but wide toward the inside. Silver Fox is coming on through. They're at the quarter pole. April Christmas cuts the corner and holds a three and a half length lead. April Christmas giving them the slip at the top of the stretch. Coming to the eighth pole now in front by five. Chris's Rainbow second. Ball's Bluff is a weakening third. Then far the back, it's Con on Broadway way and Silver Fox coming up the inside but it's going to be April Christmas today April Christmas strolling home one by eight or nine lengths Chris's rainbow was second by about five. Harvey, judging by this result what price would a horse called Shervo be next time out Shervo made his debut for Billy Mott over this track last week beat this horse April Christmas by eleven and a half lengths but what a sharp improvement today you can see John Velasquez just sitting in the Saratoga rocking chair. This horse might not have liked the off track last time. Didn't run that badly. Comes back today a winner. The due process stable, Ronaldo Nobles, taking a lot out of here this meet. Having a very good meet. John Velasquez up. 17.49 and 5.60. Chris's Rainbow, 8.85.20. The bar shoot first or 3.20 to show. That's the Silver Fox. The exact 8.45.40. The triple 8.46. $626. The double 5 and 8. $41. Comes an anticlimax tomorrow with no carry -o. I love that. It really is fun. It'll make it'll make for easier sleeping tonight, no. though, I must say. A lot of people burn the midnight oil. Bernard Baruch, and there is a change of plans, and now it looks like he will run in this race. You never know with trainer Leo O'Brien. He'll make up his mind at the very last minute, but it looks like now that he will go. Uh, a great race already with Lauren Paradise Creek, even better. Could be fun. Be right back with 10. Charts Weekly, the essential tool for multi-track handicappers. Weekly charts from seven major tracks, North American and European stakes recaps, a week in review editorial, a convenient horse index, and more. From daily racing form, of course. Order your subscription today. Call 1-800-283-2459. The National Charts Weekly. It pays to know the score. Sunjet, still leading the way with low airfares to Florida, brings you even more value for family vacations. On Sunjet, you can fly from New York via Newark to Orlando, Fort Lauderdale, or St. Petersburg, Tampa from just $79 each way. Seats are limited, so call 1-800-4-SUNJET to reserve yours. And Sunjet's Florida vacation packages start at just $199. Sunjet, bringing you more fun, more sun, and more value. Call 1-800-4-SUNJET. We've got your ticket to the sun. Unfortunately, today's steeplechase race was a bit eventful. It was two and a sixteenth, a claiming race for four-year-olds and up. Hello, second now, and Casual Flash is running in third. Prenuptial is fourth as the field turns for home. One more fence to take. Here's Sassello on the outside. Casual Flash toward the inside. Prenuptial muscles his way through, and those three will hit the final fence together. Sassello, short lead, and unseating the jockey there. A faller was the favorite Casual Flash. They're coming down to the line. It's between Sassello and Prenuptial, and under the uh, it appears.
appears as a... I'm sure the steeplechasing fraternity wish one, this one never happened. As you notice, number seven, Casual Flash, fell at the last jump. The horse broke its neck and was humanely destroyed. A very sad thing to see. Also, another horse in this race got loose early. He started running in the wrong direction. Outrider did a marvelous job to prevent a further accident. Uh, not one of the races that anybody can be very proud of. This is Sello, John R.S. Fisher, owner, trainer, Sean Clancy, up 784, 2340, prenuptial 1440, 680, the double darn 540. The exact of 59, $143. The seconds, five furlongs. These are maiden two year olds, and they're already in for tags, 50 down to 45. Second by three, Abadai running in third. Then far the back on the inside, Lively Case is fourth. Sunshine Wally getting away. Sunshine Wally now by two lengths. Valid Motion running a bit greenly is second, and Lively Case is third. Then Abadai and High Time Ruler coming to the pole. Sunshine Wally is opening up now by four. Then Valid Motion and Lively Case. It's all Sunshine Wally under the line by four. Sunshine Wally, the winner here, is one of those handicapping 101 horses. Ran a good second at the, over the track earlier in the meet, comes back today and wins it. Watch for High Time Ruler next time out. Runs a very strong second in a very erratic race. Up front, drops back, comes on again. Late. Sunshine Wally won't meet him in the maiden ranks. Sunshine Hill Farm, Bobby Roboto, and Robbie Davis. 8380-280, high time ruler, 42380, valid motion 360. The 2-1 is 3560, Cronella 122, 1740. The first double of 5-2 is 3040. We got maiden two-year-olds in the third. They too are going five furlongs, but they are not in for tags. Ready for a start. And they're off. Placid Fluid comes out in stride. Tidal Wavy is there. There goes Magical Call. Magical Call and Tidal Wavy vying for the lead now as Placid Fluid drops back running in third. Mountain of Laws is on the move from the outside running in fourth. Down on the inside, Investiture is coming on through. Then farthest out into the track, it's Dream Mountain. The hot favorite Hopkins Forest is near the back of the pack, about seven lengths from the lead. Placid Fluid, who broke sharply, is now tailing off bat to his outside. It's Lismore coming toward the top of the stretch now. Magical Call, Magical Call holding on a short lead on the inside, Tidal Wavy trying to stay with Magical Call. On the outside, Mountain of Laws is running third. Dream Mountain is fourth. Investiture running in for the back. It's Hopkins Forest at Magical Call, clinging to hold on to the lead. Still there by a half length. Mountain of Laws under a full out drive. Magical Call still there on neck. On the outside, Mountain of Laws, a final surge. It's close. Photo finish. Very Best thing that happened to me all day today was getting shut out on the four Hopkins Forest. Really hot horse, late money came in, went from nine to five to three to two on one flash. It's just not good enough today as it runs a little bit greenly. Magical Call is going to get the slight bob here Try over call this one. Mountain of Laws. Too I, close to I said call. to Jimmy Picou after this race, he'll never win. He thought this, this horse looked like it won, but it didn't. The winner is Magical Call. Mel Schneider, Scott Schwartz, and Herb McCauley. 980-460-260. A lip back. Mountain of Laws, 6 6280, Hopkins Forest, 220 to show. The 8 7s, 5480, the double, the 2 and 8s, 4240. We're going to a marathon on the Melon Turf, a mile and five eighths, three and up. Now, one is for a race other than. short lead. The Wild Irishman is now looking for the lead. Beware the quest. Kept close to them running third. Stayed too long on the outside fourth. Sultan of Java fifth toward the inside. Then it's Ace the Test. It was six lengths to make up. Halo Care is there on the outside. Then Deal again in Bellingham as the field moves for the far turn. It is the Wild Irishman with a slim lead as they hit the far turn. Cinnamon Bay is trying to come back to him and it's two lengths on the outside. Beware the quest is now put to a drive third. Stay too long is called on for his best. Sultan of Java is still five lengths from the lead. Halo Care is under the whip. Ace the test hitting his best stride now and he's threading his way through the field as they come toward the top of the stretch. Cinnamon Bay and the Wild Irishman are full out. Stay too long is in behind the lead. Sultan of Java is in a tough spot down inside. Beware the quest and Ace the test who comes out for running room. Here comes Ace the Test uncorking his rally. They're in mid-stretch. The Wild Irishman has fought his way to the lead. Sultan of Java coming hard now. The Wild Irishman 
full out trying to hold for another 100 yards. Sultan of Java, gas plunge to get to the lead. Sultan of Java, perfect trip winner. Charges red boarding and I plead guilty, but here it goes. Sultan of Java off two dreadful turf races last time, two times out on the grass, comes in here and wins in big balloons. However, one career race on the Saratoga turf course and it was a winner, a Saratoga grass course for course. However, the horse in front that day by 12 left the course. You forgot that. But one thing you got to say, William Condren, Joe Canacci, and, we, and Will Farris is a partner on this one, getting an awfully good shake from my man Nick Zito. He gets them a lot of good ones, and this one with big balloons and Pat Day aboard. 37, 80, 12, 67, 20. The Wild Irishman, 380, stayed too long, 420. The Exacta, 26, 178, 60. Quinella, 2662, 61, 20. MCI, it sounds so easy to get big savings with all those MCI friends and family plans, but first you gotta give out a list of names and numbers of your friends and family. Keep that list up to date. And after all that, anytime you call someone not on your list, you won't save anything at all. You may even have to pay up to $36 a year in fees. Why bother? Now, for a simple way to save from AT&T. With True USA Savings, spend $25 a month, subtract 20% off your AT&T bill. Guaranteed? To switch to AT&T, call 1-800-PICK-ATT. Get True USA Savings, then you're free to call anyone, anytime, anywhere in the U.S. and save 20%. No lists, no fees, no hoopla. We'll even switch you for free. All you gotta do is call AT&T. Your true Here's the fifth, this maiden two-year-olds again going five furlongs, and they too are not in for a tag. comes out running and goes directly to the lead. Boyanet has come out second. Admiralty is third. There goes Silver Midnight on the move on the outside. Wake Up the Devil is also charging hard. Then down toward the inside it's Adam's Trail. Silver Midnight takes over from Porphyry. Silver Midnight now a length and a half. On the outside Wake Up the Devil has moved into second toward the inside. Porphyry is third. The favorite Admiralty was checked on the turn. Now back running fourth five and a half lengths from the lead. To his outside it's Delta Dash followed by Admiral's Trail. At the back are Boyanette and Cool Canyon. Coming to the top of the trest, chasing Silver Midnight. Silver Midnight hustled away to a three-length lead. Admiral T trying to catch him as they head for the eighth pole. Silver Midnight by four with a furlong to run, but he's under the whip. And Admiral T is gamely trying to come to him second. By the back, Porfiri is third. Sixteenth pole. Silver Midnight still in front. Admiral T giving futile chase. Silver Midnight a length. Admiral T second. Second Off two mediocre performances, Silver Midnight much better today. Perhaps blinkers made the difference. Bill Mott continues to be snake bit in admirality. Tough trip is the even money favorite. Leroy Jolly wins two races up here at the meet. Charles Harris, Leroy Jolly, Jerry Bailey, Silver Midnight. 1264, 2340. Admiralty, the big favorite, 260, 240. Adams Trail, 460. The 64, 3320. Six is seven furlongs, three and up. Now one is a two other than. Golden Larch, Robbie Davis. Goodbye to Heaney, Julie Crone, Malmo, Pat Day. Presently, McCauley, ready to cope. Shane Sellers, Zizarou, Filberto Leon. Prenups, the heavy favorite. Santos rides, heroic pursuit, Chavez. Heroic Pursuit comes out running, but there goes Prenup quickly. Just in behind those two, it's Zizaru running third. Golden Larch to the inside, fourth. Ready to cope. Goodbye, Donies in between horses. Presently broke alertly, but is now back running seventh. And a big break back to Malmo, who's been outrun in the early going. Up the backstretch. Heroic Pursuit head-to-head -head with favored Prenup. Those two reel off a quarter in 22 and 3 fifths seconds. And Zizaru is right there with them third. Golden Larch 
Marsh toward the inside fourth. Ready to cope is only three lengths from the lead. Goodbye, Donny toward the inside. Presently takes to the outside, now beginning to pick it up as they round the far turn. Malmo is still well behind. Prenup, heroic pursuit, and Zizaru are now vying for the lead as they move toward the top of the stretch. The half went in 45 and two fifth seconds. Ready to cope is now fourth on the outside. Golden Arch is fifth. By the back presently, and goodbye, Donny. Coming to the top of the stretch, now four across the track. Prenup closest to the inside. Ready to cope is coming on the outside. And Larch trying to come through an opening toward the inside. Heroic pursuit is nothing left for the final furlong. It's now Prenup. His only challenge may come from Golden Larch. They're coming to the final 16th. Prenup still there. Golden Larch, Malmo on the far outside. A distant third under the line. Prenup prevails. A length and a half. Golden Larch with Prenup. Huge figures. Ran a beautiful race over the track last time out. Pretty weak field. This one must be a gimme, right? Uh-huh. I threw him out. Thought Prenup could only run in the slop, and how wrong could I have been? Prenup, a big race. Also watch for Malmo. Closed very well late. Probably will do much better in a distance next time out. Prenup, Edward Evans, Mark Kennedy, Jose Santos, 360, 282.20, Golden Larch, 480, 340. Malmo, another Zito horse, $5 to show. The 7-1, $21. Seventh race is six and a half furlongs. Phillies and Mass three and up. Now one is a two at twenty one thousand six hundred since February first. Personal bid: Pat Day, May Malloy, Santos, Gypsy Countess, Ruben Hernandez, Cello Grande, Julie Crone, Lily's Moment, Migliori. The bottom horse late scratch. There'll be a Conso pick three. Sentimental Diamond. <laughs> They're off. Gypsy Countess bounding immediately to the lead. Pursed up on the inside, but can't match with the quick-footed Gypsy Countess, who gets the jump on him by two. May Malloy has moved into second. Personal bid is third. Lily's moment fourth. And the early trailer will be Cielo Grande. Five and a half lengths from the leader, Gypsy Contis, as they continue their run up the backstretch. Gypsy Contis in front, a length and a half. May Malloy in full pursuit, second. And they rattled off a quarter in a brisk 22 seconds flat. It to the far turn. Gypsy Contis is blazing the way. May Malloy in hot pursuit, second by four. And then it's Lily's moment, third toward the inside. Cielo Grande now moving to the outside and commencing her rally. Farther back, personal bids dropped out of it. It's still Gypsy Contis, who's run a half mile in 45 and 1. May Malloy pressing as they turn for home. Lily's moment picks him up. Cielo Grande on the far outside. The four of them heading to mid stretch together. And May Malloy has taken the lead. Gypsy Contis weakening at the inside. Here's Lily's moment. And here's Cielo Grande in mid stretch. Lily's moment is right to the lead. It's Lily's Bowman in front. Cielo Grande on the outside. May Malloy at the rail. Down to the line. Hustling Richard Migliori gets Lily's Bowman home by three. Cielo the main question on Lily's Bowman, of course, was the layoff. Where she been since December 1st? Well, we do know that trainer David Smith did one good job getting her back to the form, and she's going to win quite easily. Migliori, who's riding very well at the meet, but the favorite is May Malloy. No excuses to finish second. Cielo Grande, who likes this track, gets up for second under Julie, but it's Lily's Bowman. New York Bread. Good return. Snowberry Farm, David Smith, and Mig. 1245, 62, 60. Cello Grande. 440, 240. May Malloy, 240. The exact of 5 4. 59, 20. The pick 3, 6, 7, 5, 203. The Conso pick 3, if you use Sentimental Diamond, 6, 7, 6, 31 dollars. Daily Racing Form Thoroughbred Action, brought to you by the Daily Racing Form, America's turf authority for 100 years running. In the world of handicapping, you've got to make the right moves at the right time. Speed is of the essence, knowledge is power, and buyer's speed figures are the key. Now, the key is form. Fire speed figures come to Daily Racing Form. Pick it up today. Daily Racing Form, where winners come to play. At the Discovery Channel, we go to extraordinary lengths to tell extraordinary stories. Stories that take you off the beaten path. So if we see it, you see it. 
the Discovery Channel. Explore your world. Eighth, a mile and sixteenth over the Mellon turf. Felicia Mayer's three and up. Now what is a three other than? Uh, Skipping then sending out Gray Mood and Crone of Venetian Red with Perrette. They're the chalk. Uh, Miss Fixit and Percy gone. Uh, Casa Air, Richie Open Toe, Robbie Davis. New Wave, uh, Jose Santos. Missy Moo, I Love You, Bailey. Speedy Colleen Dale Beckner. Said privately, Shane Sellers. Casa Air toward the inside. There goes New Wave out to grab the lead. Farthest out, Speedy Colleen as they make their way for the first turn. New Wave down on the fence. Speedy Colleen will prompt the pacemaker from the outside. Casa Air tucked away neatly in behind the lead running third. Gray Mood settles in nicely on the outside fourth. Then Venetian Red fifth toward the inside said privately, Missy Moo, I love you. Open toe is at the back of the pack. Speedy Colleen aggressively. The front now after a strong first 23 and one and Speedy Colleen opens up by three from New Wave who's second now by five. Casa Air unhurried. Now almost 10 lengths from the lead, running in third position. Gray Mood is running in fourth. Venetian Red being nudged along, fifth toward the inside. Then it's Missy Muai, love you, followed by said privately. Open toe is still at the back of the pack. The half in a flashy 46 and one-fifth seconds. Speedy Colleen running an enterprising race here, still leading by three as they hit the far turn. New Wave is running second. Venetian Red now has moved up in the pack. She's running in third. Casa Air called on for on fourth on the outside. Gray Mood within striking range is only six lengths from the lead. Then Missy Moo, I love you, said privately. Open toes at the back of the pack, but still in with the chance as they come to the top of the stretch. New Wave colors the weakening Speedy Colleen and goes on by. New Wave taking charge as they come to mid-stretch. Gray Mood down on the inside. Second, Casa Air hitting her best stride on the outside. Then said privately, open toe down the center of the course. Here comes Gray Mood rushing by. New Wave to take the lead. Lead. Open toe on the outside, hitting her best stride late, and it's going to be Gray Mood by three. I've said it 5,000 times in the past. I'll say it 5,000 times in the future. Trips win turf races. You want to take another look at this one on your VCR. What a beautiful trip, Gray. Cuts the corner on the far turn. Stoll finds another seam to run through to get by number five, New Wave, and is going to go on to the victory. A good win, but the horse is winning because of the trip. Nothing else. Julie Crone enjoying a pretty good meeting up here. Gray Mood, Roland Thompson, Thompson. Skippington and Miss Crone. 660, 360, 260. From way back, open toe, 440, 280. New wave, 340. The 1-4, $30. Here's the feature today, 90-second running, Saratoga Special, $100,000 added, grade two, six and a half furlongs. This is for two-year-old Colts. If you're betting the late double, incidentally, the 12, what a rollick, was a late scratch in the 10th. Montreal Red, big favorite, Santos up. Flitch, Mike Smith, Criminal Bundle, Jerry Bailey, Law of the Sea, Pat Day, Ross Kukas, scratch middleman, Shane Sellers. Middleman and Criminal Bundle break first. And just in behind them, it's Law of the Sea, Montreal Red down toward the inside. It's four lengths back to Flitch, who's been out sprinted in the early going. Criminal Bundle, the leader. Middleman right there with him on the outside. To their outside, Law of the Sea will dispute the pace while three wide, and the favorite Montreal Red just in behind the lead, running fourth. The opening quarter went in 22 and three-fifth seconds. Flitch is lagging behind the rest of them. He's well within striking range, though, about eight lengths from the front. They're on the far turn now. Criminal Bundle, Middleman still at his neck. Law of the Sea poised on the outside. Montreal Red in behind that phalanx of front runners. He's got nowhere to go now. Flitch is hitting his best stride. There he goes. He may be forced five wide now as Montreal Red comes four wide for the stretch drive. And the entire field passes the quarter pole together. Criminal Bundle down on the inside. Middleman is right at his throat. Montreal Red is running room. And here he comes. And Flitch is to his outside. Law of the Sea is fifth. They're at the eighth pole. Montreal Red is the leader as 
they come down to the final 16th. Flitch giving his all on the outside. And Law of the Sea, Montreal Red, showing them the way as they come down to the line. Montreal Red by three to win the Saratoga Special. Montreal Red's been a pleasant surprise for trainer Scotty Schulhofer. Of course, he admittedly didn't have that high an opinion on it first. He's now won three straight, three career races. Won both of the two-year-old stakes races in Saratoga. De Hare swept all three last year when he won the Hopal. It was the first time any horse had done that since 1916. Montreal Red has an awful good shot to make it two in a row. Scotty's sitting on some awfully good two-year-olds. Vendome Stable owns this one. Scotty Schuhoffer, Jose Santos. Favorite, 362-40-210. Flitch, 320-210. Love the C-210. The exact two favorites in order, the one two's $8. Tenth furlongs. He's a maiden fillies and mares in New York State breads. Uh, did you see her fly? Dale Beckner, Savannah Gold, Julia Heredia, Hillis Lee, Mike Leslie, Rolling to Paradise, Maiori, Five Minutes Peace Frost, a New York Dawn Latrell, Personal Nurse John Velasquez, La Toque Blanche Chavez, I'm a Baroness Alvarado, Titanic's Victoire Mojica, Personal Testimony Crone. What a rollick, late scratch. You'll get a conso if you couple it with Montreal Red. But they're in the gate. They're off. Personal testimony and La Toque Blanche break sharply. Personal nurses in between horses down toward the inside. It's Did You See Her Fly and Rolling T Paradise. Up the back stretch, La Toque Blanche, the leader. Personal testimony second on the outside. Did You See Her Fly is third. Rolling T Paradise fourth. Five minutes pieces fifth. Savannah Gold sixth. Personal nurses seventh. Hillis Lee is running in eighth. I'm a, Barrison, I'm a Baroness four wide in ninth. A New York Dawn is tenth. Titanic's Victoire is the trailer, but it's a tight pack. There's just seven to back. Personal testimony, La Toque Blanche going ahead. To head. They ran an opening quarter head to head in 22 and 4 fifth seconds. Five minutes pieces just off the lead on the outside third. Rolling T Paradise now being nudged along at the inside. Here comes I'm a Baroness with her rally on the far outside up into fifth. Hillis Lee is sixth. Titanic's Victoire now her best stride. Down toward the end. Did you see her fly? Who's now back in eighth and in behind horses. Personal testimony turns for home in front. It's personal testimony the leader. La Toquench labor down on the inside. I'm a Baroness now coming after personal testimony, but Julie Crone shakes her up and personal testimony opens up by two. I'm a Baroness is second. Hillis Lee is third. Titanic Victoire is fourth. Coming down to the line, it's personal testimony by two at the wire. I'm a Baroness was second. Hillis Lee. Personal testimony. First time Howie Tesher. Gets the job done quite easily in the nightcap. Julie Crone looking over her shoulder throughout the stretch. Very confident ride, and personal testimony proves to be much the best. She uh, did this last time and stopped, but that was a longer race. This is one of the few times I actually went to the paddock. I took my little grandson, William, with me. He sat on the horse yesterday at Howie's barn. Julie said, I'll win this one, and hard to believe she actually did. For one of the nicest people in the world, Aaron Yagoda, H. Morgan Tesha probably didn't know the horse was running. Julie Crone up. Personal testimony, 844-4360. Personal nurse runs second, uh, returning uh, 460-320. Hills Lee is third, $3 to show. The second horse is I'm a Baroness. I had a hunch there was a slight mistake in the font. The 11-9 exact is 4640. The triple, 11-9-3 is $118. The double, 111 is 25 40 And that Conso double with the favorite Montreal Red and what a Rollick returns, 380 we're entitled to a few mistakes here. We got a lot of work to do during the day, and they do a heck of a job. As for the pick six, I thought nobody hit it. I was very surprised. I was getting ready to say that no one would possibly get Three it. Three people this. came up with it. Must be Nick Zito's family. Let's take a look at those pick six numbers. That's behind a portrait that a fan did of me. I'm Paul of the two pick at the Baltimore. Yeah, that Camden Yard and was very here. popular, and now this is the biggest he's show. He's coming up here, huh? and he was going to say it on TV, but they said it's too. Uh, it makes the strike sound good. Why should he put that on? But he will be here because Saratoga, now the place to be, maybe the only game in town, right back with the first.
inventory, a convenient horse index, and more. From Daily Racing Form, of course. Order your subscription today. Call 1-800-283-2459. Farm is like any other sports franchise. Oh, you've got the Cleveland veterans. But it's still Seattle Slough. And you've got the promising rookies. Even when you've got the talent, there's always building that team that never stops. Our biggest fans are our clients, and we've got to perform for them every day. And that's why I can say to every client of this farm, at three chimneys, the focus is your success. Josephine off a beach slowly. There goes Huckster Rose. Sets out to take the early lead. Huckster Rose outruns them into the first turn. And then it's winning the day. Running second. Miss Pocket Court on the outside third. Toward the inside, all power is fourth. Miss Cover Girls lapped alongside her. Then the late starting Doc's Josephine. And Dancer's Gate will be the early trailer as they make their way into the back stretch. Winning the day in Huckster Rose in a cutthroat duel in the early going. They are going at it head to head. The opening quarter went in 23 and 3 fifth seconds. And there's six lengths back to Miss Pocket Court, who is a distant third. And another four back to All Power. And another six back to Miss Cover Girl. And then the farther back, Doc's Josephine at Dancer's Gate. Head to head up the back stretch. Huckster Rose and winning the day. The half in 47 and 1 fifth second. Another eight lengths back. Miss Pocket Court running third. All power is fourth toward the inside as they hit the half mile pole. Then another huge margin back to the rest of them. Docks Josephine and Miss Cover Girl. Dancer's Gate has been last throughout. Heading into the far turn. And the leader is now winning the day. Three quarters of a length. Huckster Rose working hard to keep up. As the favorite Miss Pocket Court is called on for her best. There she goes third and gaining ground quickly on the weakening leaders. All power is fourth. Five lengths back. Docks Josephine, who is lingering near the back of the pack early, is coming hard as the field turns for home. Here comes Miss Pocket Court to call her winning the day. Huckster Rose is down toward the inside. All power and Docks Josephine coming to mid-stretch. Miss Pocket Court to the lead by a length. Winning the day back, running in second. Docks Josephine, all power, 16th pole. Miss Pocket Court, Migliori all over from out of the clouds. Here comes Dancer's Gate. She was a mile out of it. It's close. Dancer's Gate gets there. This winner was not impossible if you thought there was too much speed in this race. Lumatine had first time off the claim. This horse won by a car, laid it up for two months, ran it way over his head. Now he's bringing it back again. Nice put over. And she gets a nice break because there's a speed duel in front of her. Dancer's Gate. Mark Hopkins said 6-7, six, 7-6 seven, seven, six at the Paddock Club. He didn't bet it. DM Glory Stable, Louis Martinez, the horse trotted home. Frank Alvarado, 31-764. Favorite, Miss Pocket Court, 280-240. All power, 480 to show. The exact is 6 7 73 60. Big group in the second race. That's my two grandsons standing there. One my son is holding. Second race, the sprint, made in Philly, two-year-olds, New York State Threads. Sheets get out quickly. Russian Ensign is there. Haviland rode toward the inside and Wild Wings. Up the back stretch. Farewell embrace now, clearing the field lead. Haviland rode hard ridden side. Wild Wings running in third. Friendly Beauty is fourth. Flannel Sheets between horses fifth. Ask Scotty on the far outside is now racing sixth with Petunia now seventh toward the inside. Then it ties sevens racing in eighth position. Bit of Potter is now ninth. Farthest out into the track, it's Katie Slag moving from 10th, then it's Russian Ensign running in 11th position, followed by Courtney Kelsey M, and She's a Criminal is well behind. Farewell Embrace is coming to the top of the stretch with the lead, but Wild Wings is coming to her now, second on the outside by three. Ascotti is third, Haviland Road is running fourth, Flannel Sheets is a wide fifth, Petunia six toward the inside as the field turns for home. Farewell Embrace coming to mid-stretch and opening up. Farewell Embrace now by two as they come past the eighth hole. Wild Wings is running second. Flannel Sheets in the far outside third. Then Haviland Road and Ascotti, 16th pole. It's Farewell Embrace still there, getting wary, but still in front. Wild Wings second. The only way to come up with 
this was to say the ones who had run weren't much, which is true, and to use all the first-time starters. This one didn't take any money, but blasts out of the gate, hangs on, firsters run one, two, three in here. And my man thought this horse had pedigree, and Steve says the get are 0 for 57. Including shows half-sisters you. scouting for kisses. It shows you the difference of opinion among pedigree hounds. There is Athena C. Corace, farewell embrace, Del Carroll, the trainer, Dennis Carr up. Big balloon, 63, 40, 25, 13, 40. Wild Wings, 660 and 5. Flannel Sheep, 640. The exact 11, 6, 687. Canela, 611, 11, 6, 240, 640. That first double, 611, 816 dollars. Here's the third. They're going a mile and a sixteenth on the inner turf. These are maidens, three and up. going for the early lead. Super 25 is there toward the inside, and coming up from mid-pack are Cher Coco and Masterfully. Those four under the line together tied, Masterfully going up after the lead. Toward the inside, Super 25, High Regents in between them. Cher Coco has been wrestled back into fourth position as Masterfully goes wide on the turn. Super 25 inherits a four-length lead after Masterfully went so wide. He's not running second now. High Regent third toward the inside. Cher Coco was fourth. Strike for life at fifth. Capo Bravo rating six toward the inside. Artemis Hawk moving smoothly in seventh, better than uh, ten lengths from the lead, followed by End of a Road. Then it's Royce Joseph, and lagging well behind the rest is Traverse Bay. 23 and one quarter, 47 and one half, Super 25, uncontested lead, but the others are closing in. Cher Coco is now coming up in between horses. Uh, on the uh, outside, Strike for Life. Strike for Life moves into second now. Cher Coco running third. High Regents is fourth. Capo Bravo on the move now. Fifth on the outside. Artemis Hawk follows that move. Artemis Hawk rallies on the far turn, and he's moving sharply now as they move toward the top of the stretch. It's Super 25 in front. Strikes off his flank second. Cher Coco third. Hawk floated wide into the stretch. High Regent down toward the inside. Capo Bravo splitting horses in mid-stretch. They still have to catch Super 25. Super 25 in front by two. Artemis Hawk and over road charging hard. A six fire. Here comes Artemis Hawk past Super 25. Here's and over road a final thrust. Here's the wire. Artemis Hawk wins. It's a long term percentage play. First time starters going long on the grass is not a good one. However, Bill Mott is unparalleled at this. Getting horses uh, ready to win long on the turf first time out. He's doing it here with Artemis Hawk, who is much the best in this race. Artemis Hawk, owner Kenneth Ramsey's hometown. Two, two for two this year, one for one last year. He likes Saratoga, Billy Mott, and Jerry Bailey in the combination. 744-44. Andover Road. This horse looks like it will like the turf. 4-3. Super 25, the pace setter, 760. The 6-4 is $31. The fourth is a sprint for three-year-old Phillies claiming tag 50 down to 45. Sent right to the lead and gets the jump on him by a length and a half. Rosemary's Joy has come out running in second. Hades Abbey is third. Prematurely Gray fourth. Princess JB fifth on the outside. Then it's Blushing Maggie between horses sixth. And Car Stars at the back of the pack. Exquisite Stars at the front of the pack with a two-length lead. Hades Abbey in full pursuit behind an opening quarter of 22 and one-fifth seconds. Into the far turn, exquisite star, the leader, length and a half. There goes Princess JV revving up on the outside. Haley's Abbey is right there, four lengths. Rosemary's Joy is dropping back to be fourth. Moving round here goes Car Star, blushing Maggie at the back of the pack, ten lengths from the lead. And the leader is still exquisite star, who leads by three at the top of the stretch. Princess JV is second, Haley's Abbey third. They're coming to mid-stretch. Exquisite star still there by three with a furlong to run. And then it's Princess JB, Car Star, and Blushing Maggie down to the final 16th. Jose Santos keeping busy on Exquisite Star. There by three, and she's home free. Exquisite Star. Exquisite Star contested a very fast pace against much tougher allowance company last time today, running for a 
a tag again. She blasts out of the gate. They're never going to catch her. She's three for three running for a tag. She likes to be a claimer. Heather with Farm, Sandra Austin, Rich Schatzberg, Jose Santos, favorite. 480, 320, 260. Car Star picks up some pieces, 640 and 4. Rushing Maggie a bit late, 340 to show. The 27 Exactus, 2880. Cornella, 2772, 2140. Jeff Siegel's Team Valor, which last season brought Star of Cozine East for a memorable series of matches with Breeders' Cup hero Lure, is back with a new star of the turf in Zuno Star, exciting winner of the Grade 2 $150,000 Jersey Derby. From coast to coast and in between, America Stable this season already has five graded stakes winners. Out west, the Grade 1 mayor, Lady Blessington, won Santa Anita's Grade 3 Buena Vista Handicap. In the east, Santa Catalina won Gulfstream's graded Shirley Jones and First Lady Handicap. And Samba Carioca led a 1-2 Team Valor finish in the graded Joe Namath Handicap at Gulfstream. In the midwest, Breeders' Cup bound Demelu Demashoot ran six furlongs in a record 108 and one fifth to win Oaklawn's $150,000 Count Fleet Handicap. Team Valor, general partnership, 800-734-5660. Team Valor, 11 stakes horses, 10 of them graded in 1994. Here's the fifth, a mile and a sixteenth on the unit turf. These are maidens, three and up. and Lear Flight. Yokohama is there and on the outside Waterlog and Risk Your Wealth. Moving by us for the first time, 30 Good Ones has a short lead, but Yokohama's right there, and those two will scrimmage for the lead heading for the first turn. A headstrong Kenny Run is coming up the inside, and Kenny Run takes the lead and opens up quickly. A bit rank while opening up now by four. 30 Good Ones running second, Yokohama third, Waterlog three wide in the early going fourth. Lear Flight hard held fifth. Risk your wealth in between horses six by two. Gone Denson again is conserved near the back of the pack along with explosive light. Then Dr. K, A.J. Warbucks at the back of the pack. Cater by two and the quarter in 24 flat to half and 48 and three. Waterlog now moves alongside Kenny Run as Yokohama settles down in third. There goes Risk Your Wealth moving into third now with the half mile to run. On the inside, Yokohama is now fourth. A.J. Warbucks is a wide fifth. 30 good ones deep in the pack and down inside sixth. Then Dr. K, gone dancing again, is in a tough spot near the back of the pack. And nine horses in front of them. They're coming to the top of the stretch. It's Kenny Run, the leader, as the field turns for home. Waterlog down inside. On the outside, Risk Your Wealth is poised in third position. Yokohama's down on the inside. 30 good ones has running room now. Then farther back, it's gone dancing again. And now, Risk Your Wealth takes the lead. Yokohama charging hard on the inside with Risk Your Wealth to catch. Yokohama second, gone dancing again third. It's Risk Your Wealth, Risk Your Wealth holding on. Will not almost win both divisions of this race with first-time starters as Yokohama, much the best steady to waiting room, will be three to five next time out. A very slow pace and a lot of very peculiar rides in here allow Risk Your Wealth to hang on by a very narrow margin. And Migliori having a great meeting. Richie O'Connell certainly is. Charles Gibbons, Ronald Wars with own this one. Risk Your Wealth. 1180, 620, and 3. Yokohama, 5 and 280. Gone dancing again. The chalk, 220 to show. The 7 2 is 54 80. We're moving on to the 6 is 6 and a half furlongs, 3 and up. Nine wins a race of 20,000 since September 1st. Was off slowly at the beginning. R.D. Wild World sent up after the lead. Humbugaboo is right there on the outside. Kiritoit came out third. And Harlan fourth. Then farther back, Classy Envoy the trailer after that hesitant beginning. R.D. Wild World pressed by Humbugaboo. They've opened up two and a half on Kiritoit third. And Jose Santos working on Harlan to keep him within five lengths of the lead. The quarter went 
stopped in 22 and one fifth seconds. They hit the fire turn, a brisk pace here. RD Wild World forced along by Humbugaboo. Three lengths back, Harlan now moving into third on the outside. Keratoid is fourth, a big break back to long shot. Class C Envoy coming to the top of the stretch. RD Wild World, Humbugaboo, Harlan closing in. Keratoid just in behind them. Off the turn and into the stretch. Harlan up on the outside to take over at the top of the stretch. Keratoid is just in behind him. RD Wild World down on the inside and a weakening Humbugaboo inside the final furlong. It's Harlan by two and a half lengths. RD Wild World switch to the outside coming down toward the line. Harlan in front and Harlan does it here by two. RD Wild World second. And there were good reasons to throw out Harlan's last few races and if you remembered how much he liked Saratoga last year, he ran right back to it today. Nice performance. All he did here last year was win an overnight handicap and then come back and run second in the Corgo. Yes, he does like it. Harlan, William T. Young, Arthur Hancock, D. Wayne, Lucas, Jose Santos again. 763.80, RD Wild World 4.260, Humbugaboo 240 to show. 360 Zatka, 33.20. On to the seventh, mile and eighth, inner turf, three and up, New York State Breds, now when it's race other than. North 44, Latrell, rain alert, Santos, late skates the favorite, Alvarado, Wacky, Wacky Road, Mike Smith, Legacy, Samin, Magic's cause, Beckner, winning river, Felix Rodriguez, Gus's pop, John Velasquez, Overpoint, Shane Sellers, Gay Bitter, Kruge, Chips Pavia, Richard Noyori, Primo Mascio, Ruben Hernandez. Skate gets out well toward the inside. Winning River is there in mid-pack, along with Gus's pop, and toward the outside, Overpoint. Then down toward the inside, Magic's Cause is coming on through. Winning River is the early leader. Gus's pop glides over to the inside. Second, Overpoint on the outside. Edges up into third. Magic's Cause reserved in saving ground in fourth. And then it's Late Skate, running in fifth position, about six lengths from the early lead. Going wide into the turn, Chis Paviva, Gay Bitter, hugs the hedge and saves ground in seventh and then far the back on the outside primo Machu is eighth rain alert ninth toward the inside followed by legacies then wacky road north 44 is the trailer the quarter went in 23 and three fifth seconds winning river leads the way by four gets a solid half here in 47 and two five length lead now Gus's pop still running along in second. Late skate now threading his way through. Magic's cause toward the inside, making steady progress to their outside over point, running in fifth position. Chispaviva is a wide sixth, and toward the inside, Gay Bitter is seventh, about five lengths from the lead now. Then farther back, rain alert, Primo Machio has the field rounds the far turn. And they have caught up to the front runner, Winning River. His lead's down to a half length. Gus's pop is on the attack. Over point poised on the outside. Late skate hemmed in behind the early front runners. Then farther back, it's Magic's cause fifth. At the top of the stretch, Gus's pop taken over. Winning River couldn't keep up. And there was room at the inside for Late skate, the favorite. But it is Gus's pop getting away to the lead by length and a half. Late skate switched to the outside. He's under a furious drive trying to catch Gus's pop. Host full tilt down the lead with 100 yards from the wire. Late skate on the outside. Gus's pop, late skate with one final thrust to win it. Late skate gets there. Late skate, a rough trip, good figure, fourth in his grass debut. Has another bit of a rough trip in here, inside, outside. Does finally get up in the final stride to nail the improbable Gus's pop. I think late skate was just a little hungrier for victory. I think if Gus's pop wins, we would have had a carryover into tomorrow, but we've had too many short price horses for that to happen. The Lakata stable, Colleen Golub, J.H. James Bond, Frank Alvarado picks up his second today. Late skate 5, 360, 280. Gus's pop 1960, 860. Rain alert 340. The 3 8, 124, 80. The pick 3, 733, 198. Racing Forum Thoroughbred Action, brought to you by the Daily Racing Forum, America's turf authority for 100 years running. Even when the race is over, it's sometimes hard to tell who won. But the best way to pick the winners before they hit the wire is with the new look Daily Racing Forum. More workouts with rankings, record at the track and at the distance, expanded race conditions, additional fractional time, front bandages, more European coverage, and more of everything you need to get the complete picture on every race. So before you try to pick your next winner, pick up the Daily Racing
racing form and see how the best just got even better. Sports Channel's News Sport gives you the latest on sports. Get the scores, the highlights, the inside stories. Go behind the numbers and hear from players and coaches. Preview your team with pre- and post-game analysis and recap. It's all on Sports Channel's New Sport. Coming in August, two great reasons to watch tennis on Sports Channel. The Pro Tour's finest women clash in the Canadian Open. Chang and Edberg highlight a field of men's stars battling for the Hamlet Cup. It's all here in August on Sports Channel. Mellon Kerr, 36 running. Burn off a roof, $100,000 rated. Grade 2 on the Mellon Kerr. Four stars, all stars out. Four star Dave will compete. Paradise with Noyori. Paradise Creek, Pat K. Escadillo, Jerry Bailey. Lure, Mike Smith. Binary Lights, Samin. And they're off. Lure and four star Dave. Break alertly. Escadillo is in between them. They're moving by us for the first time, and it will be Astadio who gets to the early lead. No one's really anxious for it. Four-star Dave protecting his position at the inside. He pokes ahead in front, and Lure has been taken back into third. He's going to do his early running from off the pace. Paradise Creek right up there in behind the lead, and Binary Light is the early trailer. Four-star Dave is the pacemaker loping along in front by length, but now Lure is on the attack as they make their way to the back stretch. The first quarter was a soft 24 and 3 fifth seconds. An easy opening quarter for the old boy. Four star Dave, the leader, into the backstretch. But now Lure is applying the pressure, and Pat Day has wheeled Paradise Creek to the outside for a clear run. Estadia was running in fourth position. Binary Light is the trailer. The half and 48 and 1 fifth seconds. And it's four star Dave, the leader down the backstretch by a half length. Lure is just off his flank. Paradise Creek, a menacing presence, just off the lead on the outside. Then toward the inside, Estadio, and farther back, Binary Light. The field hits the far turn, and it's still four-star Dave holding on to the lead. But Lure's been in no hurry to go by, but the cadence is quickening now as they approach the top of the stretch. Paradise Creek poised and powerful on the outside third, and they're coming to the top of the stretch now, and Lure will have to tussle with the Saratoga legend four-star Dave. Paradise Creek is in full flight on the outside, coming to mid-stretch. Four-star Dave digs down. Lure too much has a head in front. Paradise Creek is full tilt down the center of the court. Lure, Mike Smith, asking him for everything he has, and he's giving it to him. Lure holding on to defeat his arch rival. Doesn't get much better than this. The two best grass horses in the country slugging it out. It's hard to pass horses when you're coming home this fast. Last five eighths of this race, 57 and four. Last furlong in 11 and one. Excellent performances by both Lure and Paradise Creek. That's championship time, and there's a good reason for it. See how happy poor Mike Smith was. Mike's been on a bit of a slump. Good way to get out of it, Mike, with Lure. Claiborne Farm, Mrs. William Hagen Perry, Shug McGay, Mike Smith. Four, two, twenty, two, ten. Paradise Creek, two, twenty, two, ten. The old campaign of four star Dave, two, ten. The exacta, the two favorites, the four, two, is six, twenty. the ninth is a mile and three sixteenths on the melon turf these are three-year-olds and up claiming tags all in for 35. and they're off it's a runaway gets on fast turtle beach is there golden explosive toward the outside mr lee is hustled up from in between hopstein trying to come out for running room and green bounty on the outside a skirmish for the early lead here. Golden Explosive, there's Mr. Lee up after the lead. Green Bounty will be caught wide going into the turn. It's a runaway, hugs the fence to save ground. Alpstein is right alongside him in fifth position. And then farther back, it's Rubber Matt who takes the sixth spot on the outside. Two and a half lengths back to Turtle Beach, seventh. And another three back to No Fumar and Yaros. And farther back, the Gray Power Bolt, Merling Game at the back of the pack. The quarter went. 22 and two fifth seconds, a sharp first quarter there with Golden Explosive leading the way. He's been pressed throughout by Green Bounty on the outside and Mr. Lee to his inside. Alpstein's up close and it's a runaway getting closer from fifth. A break of three back to rubber mat to half in a grueling 46 and one. Turtle Beach is rating in mid pack followed by No Fumar who has 10 lengths to make up as they move into the far turn. Then Yaros down to his inside, had to steady a bit. Burling game and power bolt. Mr. Lee, the leader. There goes Alpstein. 
Alpstein on the outside, now putting ahead in front. Mr. Lee toward the inside. Golden Explosive is in between them. Green Body running in fourth. It's a runaway coming with his bit on the outside. Turtle Beach toward the inside. No Fumar in behind a wall of horses as the field turns for home. Alpstein opening up. Alpstein now by three. Turtle Beach is coming on now into second. No Fumar on the far outside. Rubber mat inside the final furlong. It's Alpstein in front, but he's getting leg weary. Here comes No Fumar. Turtle Beach is third. Alpstein still weakening. No Fumar charging. It's a photo finish. And Alpstein. Figured to be a lot of pace in this race, and Jerry Bailey very wisely lays off it with Alpstein. Makes his move at just the right time to open up an inch amount of a lead turning for home and he doesn't want to go quite this far but he does just last and the second horse no few more did check sharply coming into the stretch but jerry was not to be caught today on the new york bread outstanding the lost in stable john paracella john has scratched everything but he let this one run jerry bailey up eight four three forty no few more four three sixty long shot turtle beach nine twenty the exact to 37 32 60 late double four 3 26 40 triple 3 7 1 602 dollars pick six today was crushed 22 tickets over 4,000 five correct 528 winners they received 57 dollars and a fan asked for this and the fan is right there's the jockey standings today jerry bailey on front jose santos giving him a run for it smith crone and miliori right behind tomorrow's card well if you want to play the pick six i think it's a pick five there's no secret that lakeway is going to be one to ten in the alabama and five. she deserves it okay it means if he gives you four and that is five you'll at least get a pick five however five of the first seven races are up but we got away mostly there were some showers during the day nothing that affected the track we had a good solid crowd remember tomorrow we're giving away fifty thousand dollars if you're around then you got a shot because we need five hundred dollars ten people between each race a lot of money but today it was players they were here we had nine here one from california let's get to it after this in honor of the 100th anniversary of daily racing form caesar's atlantic city presents the greatest horses owners trainers jockeys and races of all time and now they're available to you with a 100 years of racing trading card set Packaged in this authentic centennial tin, each card commemorates the racing highlight of the year, every year for the past 100 years. Complete set with centennial tin, only $25. Call 1-800-208-4333. This offer is limited. Call 1-800-208-4333. A thoroughbred farm is like any other sports franchise. Well, again, slow and go. You've got the proven veterans. But it's still Seattle slow. And you've got the promising rookies. Even when you got the talent, there's always building that team that never stops. Our biggest fans are our clients, and we've got to perform for them every day. And that's why I can say to every client of this farm, at Three Chimneys, the focus is your success. The opener today was just a three-year-old's claiming tags 50 down to 45. Has eight lengths to make up. Matthew Red Dog on the far outside. The field turning for home. Medical Pro is led throughout. Got a half and 45 and one fifth seconds. Still the leader, but working hard to hold it. Here comes Mr. Tyler. Medical Pro trying to hold on. Mr. Tyler overtakes him as they near the 16th pole. Zeal Brown farther back in third. Matthew Red Dog well behind in fourth. It's Mr. Tyler going away by John two. John Paracel has been scratching a lot of horses up here. But when he runs them, they're running as well as they did when he had his best streak. I think he's running at about 666 clip. Two out of three. There's Mr. Tyler in the winner's circle. Lawson Stable, Rick Tortora, John Paracel, and Frank Alvarado. 764-320. Medical Pro 460 360 Zeal Brown 640 to show. The exact to 79 is 4340. Second half of the double is on the inner turf. It's a mile and a sixteenth. Maiden Phillies and Mass three and up. And they're off. Saratoga Lucy was hesitant at the start, spots the field a few lengths and takes a spot way behind. Powerful Lad came out sharply and is keen to race on the lead there by two and a half lengths. 
On the outside, Palace River now moving into second. And then it's World Predictions taken back on the inside. On the outside, Toast the Duchess runs along in fourth. Toast the Duchess going wide into the turn. Doctor Knows Best is saving ground and saves the fourth position. In between horses moving up now, Contessa Caveat. And then it's Toast the Duchess now back running sixth as that one went wide on the turn. Then it's really gray zone and down toward the inside, Steadfast Love. Unhurried near the back of the pack, Jody's Land. And the late starting Saratoga Lucy is the trailer. She's better than a dozen lengths from the lead. Strong fractions here, 23 and 1, 47 flat. Powerful Lad continues to move at a strong pace. World Predictions is called on for run early outside the half mile pole. And on the outside, Palace River now running in third position. Three lengths back to Dr. Knows Best, who is now fourth. Contessa Caveat, six lengths from the lead and put to the whip as they round the far turn. Jody land still moving comfortably now beginning to hit her best stride there she goes on the outside launching a strong bid they're coming to the top of the stretch world predictions has come through on the inside to take the lead they're at the top of the stretch it's world predictions now in front by two and a half lengths jody's land second to last on the back stretch is second at the eighth pole powerful lad on the outside third all trying to catch world predictions still there by two and a half lengths jody's land second on the inside giving futile chase to world predictions who will come bounding home to an authoritative victory here. Public made a nicely bred Billy Mott first to Saratoga Lucy, the favorite. When you pick up reasonably well-bred fillies for thirteen dollars or $15,000, there may be a hole in them. And apparently the hole appeared today, at least in this race. World predictions it would have been a heavy chalk without that one in there. Wins it at 5-2. to two. My Joe Lee Stable, Leo O'Brien and Jean Cougay in the winner's circle. 7, 360, 280 for world predictions. Jody's Land, 380, 320, powerful lad, 460. The four nines, 2380, the Quinella 4994, 1280, early double, seven and four, thirty dollars and twenty cents. A mile and a sixteenth on the melon turf. These are maidens and they're two-year-olds. They're off. There goes Slew's Miner directly and quickly to the lead. Over to the fence and gets the lead by three well before they hit the first turn. Toward the inside, Crown Cane, and down on the fence, it's Bronze Majesty. To their outside, save the whale running, running fourth. Then far the back, interrupted affair is fifth. Squadron leader is sixth. Just one of the boys is seventh. Timmons eighth. Try again ninth. Senior Doria is the trailer. 23 and 4 for the opening quarter. They're into the back stretch now. Slews Minor is the leader. On the outside, Crown Kane prompting second. Bronze Majesty just in behind the lead, tucked away at the inside. On the outside, saved the whale running fourth and interrupted affairs up close fifth. And a break of four back to just one of the boys. Senior Doria now launching a bid midway down the back stretch. Squadron leaders down inside. Timmons is now the trailer. The half and 48 and one fifth seconds. They're heading into the far turn now. It's Ben Slew's minor in front the whole way. Crown Crane has been just off him throughout. Just inside them, it's Bronze Majesty running third. Save the whale now. Save the whale revving up to be third on the outside. Bronze Majesty is fourth. Interrupted affair. Senior Doria is drawn within five and a half lengths for the lead. Timmons is rallying stoutly on the far outside, but Timmons will be taken very wide into the stretch. Off the turn and turning for home now. Crown Kane coming on to challenge Slew's Minor for the lead. Interrupted affair and Timmons continues in a sustained bid. And Timmons on the outside has taken the lead. Crown Kane in between horses. Down inside Slew's Miner still fighting bravely. Squadron leader is hemmed in. Nowhere to go. On the outside, just one of the boys. Timmons and just one of the boys. Timmons takes it by a nose. Trainer Sue Duncan showed only grass intent for this two-year-old gelding. Started on the turf back at Belmont going six furlongs. Did not run that badly. Worked him up here only on the turf. Eddie Maple, regular rider. Lucy Close, Sue Duncan, and Eddie Maple. A combination that has been in the winner's circle before. They're there again. Timmons, big balloons. 36 20 15 28 80 just one of the boys 640 440 crown crane 440 the 5 6 294 dollars on to the third race today the third race today is a mile and a 16th i'm sorry the fourth race my mind has snapped it's late mile and eight for three-year-olds and up now when is a two i've been made in claiming a starter and they're off 
iron gavel sent directly to the lead under Richard Migliori. Danzig's dance is flashing his early speed, but it's iron gavel who wins the race into the first turn. Danzig's dance pressing second on the outside. Amethos is up close, running third. Then it's Northern T, and at the back of the pack, Shoal Creek and Halo Habit. As they make their way around the clubhouse turn, the leader is Iron Gavel as Danzig's Dance backs off just a bit, running second through an opening quarter of 23 and 3. A break of four lengths back to the favorite Amethos, who's settled in now. Then a break of about six or seven to Northern T, who's followed by Halo Habit and Shoal Creek. Into the back stretch now. Five and a half furlongs out. The leader is still Iron Gavel. Danzig's dance right there, hounding him the whole way. A break of four back to an unhurried Amethos. Then a break of eight more lengths back to the trio of trailers, Northern T, Halo Habit, and Shoal Creek. Heading past the half-mile pole, it's been Iron Gavel now, and Migliori getting busy on Iron Gavel to protect the lead, but Danzig's dance is creeping closer on the outside. Those two widening on the favorite, Amethos, who's now dropped back seven lengths from them. They ran a half mile in 47 flat, three quarters in 11 flat. They're coming to the top of the stretch. Danzig's dance has overtaken Iron Gavel, getting clear by two and a half. Amethos is kicking in at the quarter pole. Danzig's dance off the turn with a three and a half length lead, but under the whip. Amethos is on the attack, second on the outside as they near the mid stretch marker. Iron Gavel is a fatigued third, Northern T on the outside. Danzig's dance passing the eighth pole with a five length lead. Amethos trying to get. Him, but it's still dead. They love to make Amethos a favorite. He got a perfect trip behind the speed duel. I don't even believe he's going to make it for second. Amethos tries to hold on. Not even second for this overbet horse. Three-year-old against older, who really doesn't fire that often. But look at Paracella. Here he is. He's only supposed to win two out of three. Just won two out of two. Karen Zablowitz, Paracella, Jerry Bailey, Danzig's Dance. 12.45-60-260, Northern T, 4.22.40, Amethos, 2.20. The six Six four exact is forty three twenty. Vanilla four six six four nineteen eighty. Barry Irwin and Jeff Siegel's Team Valor, which last season brought star of Cozine East for a memorable series of matches with Breeders' Cup hero Lure, is back with a new star of the turf in Zuno Star, exciting winner of the Grade Two $150,000 Jersey Derby. From coast to coast and in between, America Stable this season already has five graded stakes winners. Out west, the Grade One mayor, Lady Blessington, won Santa Anita's Grade Three Buena Vista Handicap. In the east, Santa Catalina won Goldstream's graded Shirley Jones and First Lady Handicaps. And Samba Carioca led a 1-2 Team Valor finish in the graded Joe Namath Handicap at Goldstream. In the Midwest, Breeders' Cup bound Demelu Demashoot ran six furlongs in a record 108 and 1 fifth to win Oaklawn's $150,000 Count Fleet Handicap. Team Valor, General Partnerships, 800-734-5660. Team Valor, 11 stake sources, 10 of them graded in 1994. A lot of grass today. We thank the weatherman for letting us run. Mile and a 16th on the inner turf. These are maiden fillies and mares, three and up. Lively Holiday is right up there in between horses. Miss Tauza was a close fifth. Dance of Sunshine, six toward the inside, followed by Turkey Wing, then Crazy Fling, Fight with Light near the back of the pack. She's a wild again as the trailer. Time Zero still fending off for sport. Solar Display right there with them. Solar Display moving toward the lead now on the outside. Then Timely Holiday. Ms. Tasso's right there on the outside with a clear run. Turkey Wing's only four lengths from the lead. Dance of Sunshine. Crazy Fling beginning to kick in. Six lengths behind with a quarter mile to come. Time Zero shrugging off the challenge of four sport. Here comes Solar Display with her bid. Dance of Sunshine in a tough spot at the rail. Ms. Tasso coming with clear run on the outside. Ms. Tasso charging hard to take the lead. Then it's Solar Display. Solar Fling coming late on the outside. Time Zero toward the rail and Dance of Sunshine chasing Ms. Tasso down to the line who wins here. This time they overbet a Philly name for sport. Really bred for turf. Outside post on the inner going a distance she's never gone before. For. She's a, <coughs> excuse me, about to disappoint. Here comes the winner, Miss Tass, Miss Tasso. <coughs> This is a filly with good pedigree for turf on the dam side. Jungle Princess wins it comfortably for the Rye Hill Farm, Phil Gleaves, and Santos. 15, 60, 7, 25, 60. 
<coughs> I'm going down quickly. Crazy Fling, 5540, Dance of Sunshine, pays the same. 3-1 is $73. I wish I had some water. Here's the six, the mile and eighth, Melon Turf, Phillies and Mares, three and up, State Breads, and I'm winners of a race other than that. And the rough. Lee Hugh comes out first. Triple Charm is there. She's a bridesmaid. Lady Trilogy is six deep into the track. And ready to dance seven deep and way on the outside. Do the nasty. And a scramble on for the lead. A crush of horses heading for the clubhouse. Turn together and do the nasty now. Out sprints them. Lady Trilogy is running second. Emma ready to dance up close third on the outside. She's a bridesmaid is running in fourth. Royal Cuisine is fifth in between horses. Lady Sharina on the outside running in sixth. Triple Charm back seventh. Romancing Miss is off the rail, eighth, about nine lengths from the lead, and she's followed by the gray Lee Hugh. At the back of the pack are Well Turn and Conk Cruiser, who was stalled in traffic. Into the back stretch now, the leader, Do the Nasty. The quarter went in a brisk 23 seconds flat. Do the Nasty with a length and a half lead over Lady Trilogy, second through a half of 47 and two fifth seconds. A break of four to Emma, ready to dance. She's a bridesmaid down inside. Romancing Missy making steady progress on the outside. Triple Charm is sent through an opening toward the rail. Then it's Lady Sharina followed by Royal Cuisine, Lee Hugh, and Well Turn. And they hit the far turn. It's been do the nasty the whole way. Lady Trilogy has been pursuing throughout. Now she's poised second on the outside. Romancing Missy, the favorite, is now only two and a half lengths from the lead with less than three furlongs to run. Well Turn is rallying on the outside. Toward the inside, it's Triple Charm. Royal Cuisine launching a bid from far back but will be floated six wide into the stretch. And the field turns for home and romancing Missy is cut loose opening up now by a length then it's Lady Trilogy second the front running to the nasty is weakened now back running in third then triple charm they're all chasing romancing Missy and she's lengthening her stride running away from them all today it's all romancing Missy they lost the mother when this filly was born but she's proving to be a very useful turf horse the trainer Juan Ortiz who's done a nice job with her she was really a layover in this field but you needed the trip she had the right ride for the trip, Julie Crone. John Valentino, Juan Ortiz, Juan Ortiz and Julie. Romancing Missy, 383, 280. Lady Trilogy, 16 and 9. Conch Cruiser, 480 to show. The exacto 1-8, Stay on the grass, seventh race, mile and three eighths. In it, turf, Phillies and Mayors, three and up. Now one is a race, and then Maiden claiming a starter. And they're off. Great Impulse and Chenal Mountain break together. Breeze Along is also there, along with Safranella. Sudana is being sent toward the lead from her outside post position. They move into the first turn, and Chenal Mountain is on the lead. Robbie Davis trying to harness her early speed. Sudana is now second on the outside. Safranella is just in behind the lead, reserved in third. Sam's Diary is three wide, running in fourth. Breeze Along is fifth. Great Impulse, saving ground all the way. Petitness is in behind her. Then it's Miss Carmella, and at the back of the pack are Bahia Lass, and Crandall is uh, well behind the others. They're moving by us now for the first time, and Chanel Mountain has now settled down nicely, relaxed on the lead with... Safranella only offering mild pressure with one more lap to go. Sudanas in behind the lead, reserved in third position. Sam's Diaries alongside her. Miss Carmella fifth on the outside. The half mile in 49 and two fifth seconds. Easy fractions here, and it's a tight pack. There's about six or seven lengths from front to back. Chanel Mountain has led throughout and led through easy fractions. Safranella's there on the outside. Miss Carmella now beginning to move toward the lead, running in third. Sudena's in behind the lead, saving ground now, and Sam's Diary's alongside her. Then it's Great Impulse running in sixth position. Breeze Along is unhurried in seventh. Bahia last, then Petitness. Petitness taken out for clear running on the outside. Crandall at the back of the pack, seven or eight links from the lead. Three quarters and 15 and four. They continue the run up the back stretch. They're a half mile from the wire now. Chanel Mountain still leads. Safranella creeping closer. Miss Carmella poised right there on the outside in good striking position into the turn. Sam's Diary is there. 
Then off the rail, it's Sudana, and down toward the inside, great impulse. Around the far turn now, and there goes Miss Carmela. Jose Santos sends her to the lead and readily takes charge. Miss Carmela now spurting clear by two. Safranella, Sam's diary on the attack. Here comes Petitness and Bahia last. Sudana in behind horses now. Chanel Mountain has given it up. They are all chasing Miss Carmela, who with a blitz on the far turn opened up and comes to mid-stretch with a four or five length lead. Then it's Sam's diary and Petit and breeze along and Bahia Lass. It is Miss Carmella whittling away at the lead as they come down to the line. Figure this one out. This horse was beaten three parts of a length in this exact same condition up here at Saratoga. Correctly, they made a seven to two in the morning line. Public just ignored her completely. She goes off as what can only be considered a good overlay if you were looking for such. Miss Carmella, she is owned by John T.D. and William Flynn and trained by Rita Nash and Jose Santos, one of our leading riders aboard. Miss Carmella, 1460, 620, 420. Petitness, her usual late move, 624. Sam's Diary, 320. The exact to 976, $76. Pick three, 319, $316. The Daily Racing Form Thoroughbred Action. Brought to you by the Daily Racing Forum, America's turf authority for 100 years running. We got them. In the National Charts Weekly, the essential tool for multi-track handicappers. Weekly charts from seven major tracks, North American and European stakes recaps, a week in review editorial, a convenient horse index, and more. From Daily Racing Forum, of course. Order your subscription today. Call 1-800-283-2459. The National Charts Weekly. It pays to know the score. The symbol of success is the OBS. At the sales. On the track. The symbol of success is the OBS. The Ocala Breeders Yearling Sale starts Monday, August 22nd. Get more for your yearling dollar in Ocala. Promotional consideration has been provided by New York's favorite Italian eatery, the Luna Restaurant, conveniently located across the street from Belmont's Clubhouse. The Luna offers the very finest Italian cuisine. Find out today why when New Yorkers want the best dinner or lunch, it's also reasonably priced, they make the obvious choice. They go to the Luna. See you there. Got to love a racetrack where you can say the 114th running of the Alabama. $200,000 added, a mile and a quarter. This is for three-year-old fillies. Two Aldozano, Craig Perrette, Heavenly Prize, Mike Smith. Plenty of Sugar, Julie Crone, Sovereign Kitty, Santos, Jade Flush, Bailey, Lady Rako, Shane Sellers, big favorite, Lakeway, and Kent the Sormo. Pro Tem leader of the three-year-old Philly division is Lakeway and Kent DeSormo. In the gate, ready for the start of the 114th Alabama Stakes. And they're off. Lady Rako veered in a bit at the start, and so did Lakeway. Two Altizano came out smoothly, and she's gone directly to the lead. But plenty of sugar is right there, as Heavenly Prize tucks in behind the lead. Here comes Sovereign Kitty, and Lakeway is there four wide as they head into the clubhouse turn here at Saratoga. Two Altizano has a short lead. Sovereign Kitty is pressing, and Lakeway's right up there, taking a bit wide going into the turn. Heavenly Prize is saving ground throughout, tucked away at the inside and fourth. Plenty of sugar alongside her in fifth. Then long shot Jade Flush, and a big break back to the trailer, Lady Rako. An easy first quarter here for two Altizano, 23 and 4, fifth second. Sovereign Kitty was right there with her, and Lakeway is poised, sitting just off the lead on the outside third. And just to her inside, Heavenly Prize, who's had a ground-saving trip so far. Then it's plenty of sugar, Jade Flush, and Lady Rako at the back of the pack. The fractions are easy in the early going, the half mile and 48 seconds flat. Sensing the urgency of the slow pace, now DeSormo moves Lakeway to the lead. 
Lakeway takes the lead with five furlongs to run in this Alabama. Sovereign Kitty is there. Two Altizano is back in third. Now Mike Smith angles heavenly prize to the outside for clear running in fourth as the field passes the half mile pole. And Lakeway is cruising on the lead. She leads now by three. Heavenly prize has moved into second now on the outside. Sovereign Kitty is back running in third. Two Altizano is tailed off badly. Then it's Lady Rako moving through toward the inside. It's Lakeway the leader, but now Heavenly Prize is going to test her. Lakeway tested by Heavenly Prize. Heavenly Prize with a stiff challenge for the lead, and Heavenly Prize is taken over. Heavenly Prize is in front at the back, at the, at the top of the stretch, and Lakeway is trying to battle back valiantly, but it is Heavenly Prize who passes the eighth pole with the lead by a length and a half. Lakeway is being left behind in second here at the Graveyard of Champions. Heavenly Prize is going on to win it, and she'll win here by five. There was no question about this filly's class. She had as much class as the favorite Lakeway. You might have asked whether she could go this far off the conditioning she's had this year, but if you looked in your program, you saw she was conditioned by Shug McGahee. She runs like a car here. Well, incidentally, Lakeway won't have to run on the Travis. She's just lost the Alabama. Uh, this is why seeking the gold has become such a hot sire of horses like this. Heavenly prize, beautiful. Ogden Phipps, Shug McGay, Mike Smith. He may be in a slump, but not in the feature races. 12.43 and 2.10. Lakeway, 2.20, 2.10. Sovereign Kitty, this is why you don't bet 25 to 1 shots to show, 2.10. The exact of two sevens, twenty-three dollars. Considering those were the only two, the late double nine two, seventy twenty, triple two seven four, one hundred and eighty-six dollars. Here's the simulcast we had from California. It was the mile and a quarter, one million dollar Pacific Classic. Damascus has folded. We down to a two-horse race. Chris McCarran and Best Pal on the outside. Tinner's Way and Eddie Dalla, who say they come through the lane together. Best Pal sticks his neck out and goes for the wire, but Tinner's Way is all hot at the rail. Tinner's Way, it's just a matter of strength in the last 50 yards, and the strength belongs to Tinner's Way, and Tinner's Way has won Bobby the... Bobby Frankel, Eddie Dalla, who see Tinner's Way for the Judmont Farm. 13.86, Best Pal, five and four. Dramatic gold part, part of the entry runs third. However, the triple will be round out by Slew of Damascus. The 8 ones 83.40, the 8 one six triple, $503. Finale here, the 10th, the mile and eighth, maidens three and up, New York State breads. And they're off. Nascra Prince from the inside out after the lead. 7th of December, tucks in behind Nascra Prince, who goes out winging early. Instant Grudge has taken five wide into the turn. Esoteric Prince had to steady. 7th of December is down inside. Gold Samples now moving up in between horses to take fourth position. Father back, Toe Tapper running in fifth. Esoteric Prince steady down the turn, back running in sixth. And then it's Uncle Pockets, who's seventh on the outside and beginning to move a bit as they make their way into the back stretch. Then it's Grave Dancer, two lengths back to Sir Noble. Then a big break back to Dynamite Devon, and even farther back is about eight more lengths back to Nettles Gold Glove, who is lagging well beyond the rest. The first quarter goes in 24 seconds flat. They're midway down the back stretch now, about five furlongs from the line with Nascar Prince in front, Instant Grudge prompting second, and down toward the inside, 7th of December is third. Uncle Pockets is now fourth, only three lengths from the lead on the outside. Toe Tapper running in fifth, Sir Noble threading his way through between horses in sixth position. Esoteric Prince is seventh on the outside, then Grave Dancer, then Dynamite Devon. Gold Samples drop back badly. Now the field is rounding the far turn. It's still Nascra Prince in front. Nascra Prince is led throughout and still leads by three and three comfortable lengths as they move toward the top of the stretch. Toe Tepper now coming on to be second. Instant Grudge running in third. Uncle Pockets is fourth on the outside. Sir Noble is now about six lengths from the lead as the field turns for home. Nascra Prince turns for home with the lead. Toe Tapper. And on the outside, here comes Uncle Pockets now with his final run toward the lead. 7th of December is moving into contention late. Dynamite Devon is now coming on through in between horses. Sir Noble is there on the outside. The favorite's in front now. It's Uncle Pockets who has taken over from Nascra Prince. Sir Noble is there on the outside. Toe Tapper, Dynamite Devon coming down to the line. Uncle Pockets wins here by two and a half lengths. Sir Noble was second. The only thing that was going to beat this favorite was a rough trip 
and she didn't get a rough trip. There's Miss Crone picking up her second winner. Dennis Drazen, Pete Forte, Julie Crone, Uncle Pockets, 443 260, second favorite, Sir Noble, 343 20. You needed top tap on your all ticket, 780 to show. The 11 2s, 1480, the triple 11 2 5, $181. This pick six today was not easy. One person on track hit it. They didn't get 540,000. They got 120, almost 121, and deserved it. Five correct, 31 tickets, $1,298 for them. There's your update coming up on the jockey standings. Jerry's still on top. Santos doing well. He's second. Smith and Crone and Migliori behind them. Remember, tomorrow, a lot of money given away between for after each race they will draw 10 names and 500 bucks to each one of them that's fifty thousand dollars during the day saratoga is a lot of fun even if we don't give you fifty thousand so give it a shot tomorrow good night may the horse be with you your college football. The Big East, the Pac-10, the SEC, plus locals Hofstra and Fordham. College football on Sports Channel kicks off Saturday, September 3rd. Sports and Exposition Authority and Sports Channel present Racing from the Meadowlands. Closing night with the Sweetheart, the Mistletoe Shally, and the Woodrow Wilson Finals. And hi, everybody, and good evening to our final night of racing action here for 1994 at the Meadowlands. I'm Ken Warkinen with Bob Hollywood Hayden. As we mentioned, we've got the finals of the Sweetheart, Mistletoe Shally, and the Woodrow Wilson tonight. Uh, first of all, we want to mention the results of the Adios. John Campbell, who is going to uh, cap off his 12th driving title here at the Meadowlands tonight. Uh, winner with Cam's Card Shark, no doubt he's uh, already been named the uh, Horse of the Year. And he may be better right now than he's been all year. 150 and 4 in his elimination, eased up. 151 and 1, when, including a 54 and 1 final half in the final. He was off by himself. <laughs> Well, the show. I hope I can get through it tonight without coughing. Incidentally, I owe people an apology. There was an incident in the steeplechase race, and I forgot to warn you last week. I feel very badly about that. For those people, I really apologize. I wasn't here for the race and didn't know it was going to happen, but it did happen. I should have warned you. Uh, our weather is the same as it is at Woodstock. We had rain today, washed out a lot of all the turf race except the feature. We got a muddy track, and it's now turning cold, as it will in Woodstock. However, we had 10. Let's see them after this. If you want to play at the track, you've got to get Playing to Win, the all-new, fun-to-watch, easy-to-understand handicapping video from America's Turf Authority Daily Racing Forum. Host Bob Newmeyer takes you inside the track, talks to key players, and shows you how the pros pick their winners. Past performances, speed figures, workout patterns, and breeding angles are just a few of the helpful handicapping tips that can really pay off. Playing to Win will take you to the front. Call 1-800-208-4333 today to order your very own copy. A thoroughbred farm is like any other sports franchise. Well, again, slow and go. You've got the proven veterans. But it's still Seattle slow. And you've got the promising rookies. By so free who has Even when you've got the talent, there's always building that team that never stops. Our biggest fans are our clients, and we've got to perform for them every day. And that's why I can say to every client of this farm, at Three Chimneys, the focus is your success. 
The opener on that off track is a mile and eight. These are three-year-olds. Claiming tags, 35 down to 32 claims, believe it or not. Lightning Cat to Gaspar Mochera. Promising Rainbow to Gary Siaka. Out of it now. And moving around that one comes Promising Rainbow as the field. Turns for home. Lightning Cat down inside, still fending off the challenge of a track attack. Promising Rainbow down the center of the track is moving to the leaders now. Those three across the track as they pass the eighth pole. It's a track attack with a short lead. Promising Rainbow on the outside, leaving Lightning Cat behind. And here comes Promising Rainbow to get ahead in front. A track attack. Promising Rainbow and a track attack. Jimmy Picou, who lost that tough photo last week, finally gets himself a winner here, but he loses the uh, Colt. Promising Rainbow, Marshall Siegel, Jimmy Picou, Pat Day up. 10.44-240. Favorite track attack, 360-220. Lightning Cat, 220. The exact of 5-4, 4280. The second's at a mile and an eighth. These are maidens, three and up. And they're off. Crown Pearl gets out fast, and so does Robert Barron, then Timeless Dream and Private Cody in a crush of horses heading for the first turn together. Private Cody benefits from his post and gets to the lead. Timeless Dream is second, and toward the inside, it's Cherokee Hill. In between horses, it's Free Agent running in fourth, Crown Pearl three wide fifth, then it's Libertine and Robert Barron at the back of the pack. The first quarter goes in 24 and 1 with Private Cody in front, prompted by Timeless Dream and Cherokee Hill laying just off them third. A break of two back to the trio of Libertine, Crown, Pearl, and Free Agent, and another six lengths back to Robert Barron, who's uh, dropping farther back now. And moving up the back stretch, about five furlongs from the line. The leader is Private Cody, Timeless Dream, still running second, the half and 48 and three over the uh, sloppy going. Cherokee Hill is kept with two links of the lead. Another two back to Libertine. Pat Day beginning to coax him along now. Free agent is six lengths from the front with the half mile to go. Crown Pearl on the outside being asked for more run. Robert Barron still lagging behind. Private Cody blazing the way around the far turn with a two length lead but Cherokee Hill is picking it up. Timeless Dream is right there toward the inside trying to come off the rail for running room now. Timeless Dream is put to a drive. Cherokee Hill to his outside. Then farther back free agent is now running in fourth. Robert Barron who is lingering near the back of the pack early is in full flight on the outside. Seven lengths from the leader. The leader is still Private Cody. Private Cody in front, but he'll be tested here by favorite Timeless Dream, who's coming up the inside. Private Cody full out, wandering toward the inside, just ahead of Timeless Dream now, who had to steady just a bit as they come past the 16th pole, but Private Cody's getting well clear of Timeless Dream. It's going to be Private Cody, and he'll score. That's it for Private Cody. Breaks his maiden. Took him 13 shots. He had five seconds in there, but Today, Jorge Chavez just gets him home. Easiest kind of winner. TN Equistar Stable, Bruce Levine and Chavez. Private Cody, 1043, 8340. Favorite Timeless Dream, 32280. Libertine, 460. Exacto 1-2s, 3180. The Aquinella 1-2-2-1s, 1260. Early double, 5 and 1, $70 and 40 cents. The third is a sprint. These are maidens, two-year-olds. Me, my, and Sneaky Quiet get out together, and there goes Noraquilon to take the lead. It's Noraquilon to the front. Me, my, running second. Hempstead Heat hustled up third toward the inside. Sneaky Quiet is fourth. Then in between horses, one aria fifth, followed by Rising Reason, and then it's three lengths back to College Park and Towering Princess. Noraquid on the leader by five, ran a quarter in 21 and three fifth seconds, really zipping along over that slop. Noraquilon leads by six. Hempstead Heat is pursuing second and getting closer. Me, my third on the outside. Sneaky Quiet is fourth and running a bit wide, and toward the inside, it's one aria. Turning for home, Nor Aquilon drilled a half in 45 and two, whittling away at the lead as they come toward the mid stretch marker. The lead's down to three lengths now. On the outside, Me, my has now moved into second, and then it's Hempstead Heat. Those two heads apart for second and third. Sneaky Quiet is fourth, all chasing Nor Aquilon. Like a hydro 
Astro plane skipping over the mud today. Nor Aquilon wins easily here. One this race three. looked reasonably competitive on paper. A lot of these maiden fillies had run pretty good races in the past. Couldn't understand why Nor Aquilon was such a short price. But about the eighth pole, even I could figure her out. The due process staple, Ronaldo Noble, Mike Smith, like an aquaplane. Nor Aquilon, 423, 240, sneaky quiet, 564, Hempstead Heat, 540. The exact 112, $24. First of those off the turf is, is the fourth, now a mile and an eighth on the main. Three and up to 50 down to 45. It's a late scratchy of Plumos. If you use Plumos in the pick six, you move to Patriot Strike. And they're off. Rippleton Road is going for the lead, and so is Best Selection. And on the outside, Eternal Orage. It's Best Selection who now gets to the lead. Eternal Orage alongside second. Rower on the outside. Rippleton Road saving ground toward the rail. The mechanic is in between horses. The mechanic takes the third slot. Rower's on the outside fourth. The gray Rippleton Road is fifth. Patriot Strike reserved in sixth. About seven lengths from the lead now. And Genki is at the back of the pack. They're making their way into the back stretch. And the leader is Best Selection out there by a length and a half. But he's being pursued by the mechanic who's coming quickly. And on the outside, by Eternal Orage. The opening quarter one in 23 and three-fifths seconds. There's a break of five and a half lengths back to Rippleton Road, and Patriot Strike now is on the outside. Then farther back, it's Rower who's tailing off, and Genki continues to trail. Four and a half furlongs left here. The half mile went in a solid 47 and one-fifth seconds. Best selection is being pressed now by the mechanic. Best selection still holding on to the lead. Three quarters of a length. On the outside, the mechanic still trying to get to him. Rippleton Road is coming up quickly now, hitting his best stride as they round the far turn. He's third. Eternal Orange has dropped back to fourth. Patriot Strike called on for his best, and he's coming on through. Moving toward the top of the stretch, Best Selection is still in control as they make their way toward the quarter pole. Rippleton Road trying to squeak through a narrow opening on the inside and does get through. Rippleton Road comes on through to take the lead after an aggressive move at the quarter pole. But Patriot Strike is coming well on the outside now. It's Rippleton Road in front by two and a half lengths. Patriot Strike second on the outside. Toward the inside, the mechanic is now third. Rippleton Road wanders to the center of the track, but will come home first. Rippleton Road by five. Never first, second, or third on the main track, but Jonathan Shepard left the gelding in, and Julie Crone did all the work. Comes through on the inside. Horses drifting all over the place in the stretch, but well clear of the field. The Dairy Meeting Farm, Jonathan Shepard and Julie Crone. Rippleton Road, 17.563. Favorite Patriot Strike, 3.240. Eternal Orange, 4.260 to show. The 1 3 is 4880. Quinella 1 3 3 1, 1780. August yearling sale of 1990, Mockingbird Farm homebreds have won an Eclipse Award and millions for their owner. And thus far in 1994, the Mockingbird Farm homebreds have continued their winning way. The good news is there are more where these came from, and they can be yours for the bidding at the OBS August yearling sale. So be in Ocala Monday, August 22nd for the annual Mockingbird Farm consignment. Mockingbird Farm, we take you to the winner's circle. How do you like your college football? The Big East, the Pac-10, the SEC, plus locals Hofstra and Fordham. College football on Sports Channel kicks off Saturday, September 3rd. the turf again for the fifth now mile and three sixteenths main these are maiden fillies and mares three and up state breads of i skate 
And the Nets three lengths back to Blarney Stone last, now running in third, followed by Staked Plain fourth on the outside, then Flutter Up and Miss Shakomeko at the top of the stretch. Existentialism in front. Blarney Stone last is coming up the rail. Farther back, Ice Skate couldn't keep up. And inside the eighth pole, Blarney Stone last rolls now to a four length lead and getting farther away the closer they get to the wire. Existentialism clearly second best. No doubt about this winner, though. Blarney Stone last under the line by six or seven lengths. Fastest filly in the race. Only question was whether she could get the mile in 316th, never having gone this far. We don't know whether she could get it, but we now know the ones behind her couldn't. She wins for fun. Lawrence Goikman, Philip Johnson, Mike Smith, Blarney Stone last. Favorite, 522, 8220. Second choice, existentialism, 3240. Flutter up, $3 to show. The exact of 3 2, $13.20. On to the sixes, a sprint, Phillies and Mass 3 and up again, state breads, non winners of a race other than. And they're off. There goes previously, directly to the lead previously. Out there now by length. Miss Halo Country on the outside. Lone Star Gale is in between horses. Will Spy now is coming on through. Sarah Paul's also up in mid-pack and down toward the inside, Rockford Peach at the back of the pack. In the wink of an eye, Terrace Tempest, the early trailer, all chasing previously. Previously drills a quarter in 22 and one and leads by a length and a half. Miss Halo Country in full pursuit running second. Will Spy now is right there, third toward the inside. Sarah Paul is fourth. In the wink of an eye, fifth on the outside, about five lengths from the front. Then Terrace Tempest, Rockford Peach, and Lone Star Gale. It's still previously but Miss Halo Country is coming to her as they make the turn into the stretch. Will Spy now cuts the corner and comes on through at the top of the stretch. Will Spy now is coming through an opening on the inside. Miss Halo Country on the outside. Previously is trying to keep up but weakens in between horses and Sarah Paul is coming hard. Down to the final 16th. Miss Halo Country under a furious drive. Will Spy now comes on and grabs the lead 100 yards out. It is Will Spy now in front and pulling away a rail skimming ride here by Pat Day to win it. Canada legitimate favorite. I thought the race was competitive, but it wasn't competitive for Pat Day. Up the rail he comes and he puts them away. We'll spy now the Dorsal, Stable, Jack Bradley, and Pat Day, second for Pat today. And we'll spy now returns as the favorite, 442-60-240. Miss Halo Country, 380-340. Sarah Paul, $4 to show. The exact is six and nine, sixteen dollars and eighty cents. Next is a mile and eighth, another off the turf. But these are Phillies and Mass three and up. Now one is of two other than Maiden claiming a starter. Knock Knock was a late scratch. If you used it in the pick six, you move on to the post time favorite. I believe number uh, 10, Exotic Moves. And they're off. Stall Dancer Exotic moves into Har's best out for the lead. Private Session is fourth and slew the Duchess, the early trailer. They hit the first turn. Exotic moves up three wide after the lead. Dahar's best is there angling over just ahead of Stall Dancer, who backs off third. Private Session is fourth in the early going, about five and a half lengths from the dueling leaders. The trailer is slew the Duchess. They're making their way into the back stretch now. And Dahar's best forced through the opening quarter by exotic moves. The quarter went in 23 and 4 fifth seconds. Three lengths back to Stall Dancer in hand running third. Another two and a half back to private session and still trailing. The field is through the Duchess. Down the back stretch, Dahar's best bounding along on a clear and uncontested lead now, pulling away from exotic moves to a four length advantage. Stall dancers on the outside and private session toiling at the back of the pack. The half went in 47 and two fifth seconds. They're heading into the fire turn. The Har's best leads by three and a half with less than a half mile to run. Exotic moves on the inside and the outside stall dancer. Farther back, it's private session. And slew the Duchess midway around the fire turn. It's been to Har's best the whole way. Still there by five coming to the quarter pole. 
Stall dancers second on the outside. Exotic moves. Jerry Bailey asking private session for more run as they turn for home. Off the turn and into the stretch. It's Tahar's best still there by three and a half. Stall dancer is second. Private session on the outside. Tahar's best still in front. Under the whip now, but passes the eighth pole. Four lengths clear of Stall dancer in five the back private session. It's going to be Tahar's best here who went wire to wire and loved the Saratoga slop. This filly had never won on a dirt track either, but she did have a second and a third. And uh, Nick Zito just told Dale Bettner, get her going, see how far you can go. Well, she went the mile and an eighth faster than anyone in this heat. Alan Paulson owns her, Nick Zito, the trainer. Dale Bettner aboard, Dehar's best. 824-4360, stall dancer, $564, private session, 280 the nine fives, 5160. The pick three, arithmetical, 369, $55. The console pick three, 361, $11. Daily Racing Form Thoroughbred Action, brought to you by the Daily Racing Form, America's turf authority for 100 years running. We got them. In the National Charts Weekly, the essential tool for multi-track handicappers. Weekly charts from seven major tracks, North American and European stakes recaps, a week in review editorial, a convenient horse index, and more. From Daily Racing Form, of course. Order your subscription today. Call 1-800-283-2459. The National Charts Weekly. It pays to know the score. The symbol of success is the OBS. At the sales. On the track. The symbol of success is the OBS. The Ocala Breeders Yearling Sale starts Monday, August 22nd. Get more for your yearling dollar in Ocala. Promotional consideration has been provided by New York's favorite Italian eatery, the Luna Restaurant, conveniently located across the street from Belmont's Clubhouse. The Luna offers the very finest Italian cuisine. Find out today why when New Yorkers want the best dinner or lunch, it's also reasonably priced, they make the obvious choice. They go to the Luna. See you there. Here's the eighth. This is seven for a long three and up. Now one is of a race other than Maiden claiming a starter. Field of four. And they're off. It's a star gets out first on the far outside. It's a star up after the lead. Richard Migliori has gone to the whip from Hawaii Star, and he is bent on the lead. But It's a Star is the quicker of the two and holds the lead by a half length. Hawaii Star, hard ridden, getting closer to It's a Star. And the two early trailers will be Call Me Anytime, and on the outside, it's Easy Minor. 22 and 3 in a hard fought opening quarter it was between It's a Star and Hawaii Star. It's a Star, a short lead. Migliori has been all over Hawaii Star trying to get ahead of It's a Star. Those two still head to head, and it's two and a half lengths back to Easy Miners. Now third on the outside, and call me anytime. A protracted speed duel here between It's a Star and Hawaii Star. 45 and 2. They've been together for the opening half mile. Then call me anytime and Easy Miners. Minor. Coming to the top of the stretch. It's still It's a Star going at it with Hawaii Star. It's a Star off the turn with the lead. Hawaii Star is really working hard now to try to keep up. The others are closing in now. Here's Easy Minor on the outside. Easy Minor is charging hard. Hawaii Star is resurgent. It's a Star isn't done yet. It's a Star still holding on to the lead. They're coming down to the finish. It's, it's a Star fighting off every challenge to win here by a length and a half on the line. Call me any... Shane Sellers seemed to be toying with them all the way here, but he had a little trouble getting away in the stretch. But it's a star, the favorite. Milton Ritzenberg, Bruce Johnstone, Shane Sellers. 480, 3.20 and out. Call me any time. LSI Gold gets a piece. 4.20 and out. Hawaii star out. And this is, of course, the beginning of an instant double. On to the ninth. This is the Diana Handicap. It's still on the soft turf, but it was moved to the inner from the Melons. $125,000 rated grade two. Phillies and Mayors three and up. 
the Christopher Clement, Billy Mott entry, Cox's Orange and Bailey, Elizabeth Bay, Mike Smith. Blazing Katie, Jean-Luc Samin, Via Borghese, Aluminum Pan on, also Jose Santos aboard. Heed Chavez, Coronation Cup Pate, Aqualegia Scratch, favors Alice Springs with Julie Crone. And they're off. Alice Springs stumbled a bit, leaving the gate. Via Borghese is sent out after the early lead. On the outside, Elizabeth Bay is now edging into second, and Blazing Katie is taken back at the rail. Moving under the line the first time, they've conceded the early lead to Via Borghese, the leader by a length. On the outside, Elizabeth Bay is a hard-held second. Blazing Katie saving ground toward the inside in third position. Heat is in between horses. Coronation Cup is three off the rail. Alice Springs is four wide into the turn. That's Heat at the back of the pack. Up closer was Cox Orange. Around the clubhouse turn, and the leader is Via Borghese. Gazy. On the outside, Elizabeth Bay in hand running in second. Blazing Katie is hard held third. Cox Orange is between horses fourth. Alice Springs continues on the outside. Then it's Heat at the back of the pack, also hard held. Coronation Cup has settled down trailing about six lengths from the lead. Over the soft going, the quarter went in 24 and three and a half and 50 and one fifth seconds. Via Borghese continues on an uncontested lead. Elizabeth Bay is running second. Blazing Katie down toward the inside. Cox Orange moving comfortably in between horses. Alice Springs on the outside, still only three and a half lengths from the lead. Heed and Coronation Cup still trailing the field. They hit the far turn. It's still Via Borghese. Via Borghese has been in command the whole way. Elizabeth Bay has been just off her flank. Blazing Katie's had a perfect trip so far. Cox Orange is fourth on the outside. Farther back, Heed. Coronation Cup is coming up the inside and Alice Springs in tight quarters. They're coming to mid-stretch now and it's Via Borghese full out to hold on to the lead. Via Borghese there holding on to the lead by a half length. Blazing Katie is giving her all. Coronation Cup is third, 100 yards from home, and it is Via Borghese, and Via Borghese goes on to win here under a heady rod by Jose Sanchez. My friend Eleanor Penna called me earlier today, said, what time are you on tonight? I gotta take this race for the owner of Via Borghese. Uh, Angel Penna Jr., Eleanor is the widow of Angel Penna Jr.'s father, so she knew something, obviously. I hope the tape is there, Mr. Parrish, because you won the race. Why? a wire. The aluminum pad didn't hurt one bit. Mia Borghese, Malcolm Parrish, Angel Penna Jr., Jose Santos. 1186-6380. But even if you used it, this was tough to come up with. Blazing Katie with Samine. $16.66. Coronation Cup, $5. And in the small field, he exacted three twos, 247. Late double eight threes, 3580. The middle double, I'm sorry. The, the triple, 325, $1,191. Here's the finale. This is a mile and eight. Phillies, three-year-olds, claiming tags, 25 down to 20. Rushney, Roberto Leon. High Meal Royal, Julie Crone. Kentucky Blush, Dale Beckner. Blazing Clearance, Mike Luzzi. Frisky's finale, Ruben Hernandez. Fit and Perfect, Robbie Davis. Lily Von Stink, Mike da Smith. Ten in Pocket, Chavez. Chains, Cowgirl, Nelson. Diane Nelson. Cherry Glow, Lovato. Gold of Gold, Pat Day. Off Rush knee, hustled out for the rail, fit and perfect. Frisky's finale is there. Ten and pocket cherry glow on the far outside. Lily Von Stink and the race is on for the lead as they hit the first turn. Fit and perfect. Frisky's finale now with the best early speed. Those two going full tilt in the early going. And they've already opened up five lengths on blazing clearance. Now third toward the inside. Lily Von Stink is running in fourth position. Shane's Cowgirls fifth. Cherry Glow is a wide sixth. Gold of Gold has been maneuvered to the inside, saving ground in seventh. And then it's High Meal Royal, followed by Kentucky Blush. Ten and Pocket has stopped badly on the first turn. Now second to last, Roshni is the trailer. 23 and one, a brisk first quarter here, and the leader is Fit and Perfect, who shakes off the first challenge of Frisky's finale to lead by three. It's a break of another four lengths. Back in third position is Blazing Clearance, then Shane's Cowgirl a distant fourth, the half, 46 and four fifth seconds. Then farther back in the field, Cherry Glow is four wide, running in sixth position, down toward the inside 
it's gold of gold now, seventh. Jaime O'Royal is eighth in between horses. Lily Von Stink is tailed off in Kentucky Blush. Rosh the intended pocket well behind. Around the far turn, fit and perfect. Running away from them here, opening up by five and a half lengths. Blazing clearance, trying to get closer. Frisky Spinelli couldn't keep up. Then on the outside, Cherry Glow is rallying, and Cherry Glow is coming sharply. Now third on the outside. Then a break of three back to Shane's Cowgirl, followed by Gold of Gold. Kentucky Blush now beginning to hit her best stride. Jaime O'Royal is tailed off as the field turns for home. Fit and perfect has squandered that big lead. On the outside, Cherry Glow is right there. Blazing clearance fights her way in between horses. Those three coming to the eighth pole together with Kentucky Blush full of run down to the final 16th. It's Blazing Clearance who has fought her way to a short lead. Blazing Clearance down front. Fit and perfect on the inside. Kentucky Blush gobbling up the slop to get to the lead right before the line. Kentucky Blush wins. Maybe Eleanor wanted me to tape the ninth and 10th race because this is Angel Penna Jr. for both ends of the late double. Young Dale Beckner picking up his second on here. Carlos Guntovich owns Kentucky Blush and it's big balloons. 59-40, 24-40, 12-80, Blazing Clearance, 5-23-80, Cherry Glow, 8-20 to show. The exact of three fours, 364, the late double, the Penna Jr., the old 3-3, $270.40, and the triple, 3-4-10, $4,534. Pick six today was hit. There were, uh, I believe, three winners today. Let's take a look at it. They received 29,000 plus, five correct 330 tickets. They were, they were rewarded with $88. There's the upgraded, updated jockey standings. Bailey and Santos close in a little bit. Mike Smith coming back with 21, and Crone and Migliori right behind. And now, speaking of Eleanor Penna, uh, handicapper for the Troy Record, handicapper for most local radio stations, <laughs> does the Paddock Club for me on Monday. Thought it's about time we had him on the show. Mike and I will be back. Mike Smith, not the jockey, and I will be back with all nine right after this. Charts Weekly, the essential tool for multi-track handicappers. Weekly charts from seven major tracks, North American and European stakes recaps, a week in review editorial, a convenient horse index, and more. From daily racing form, of course. Order your subscription today. Call 1-800-283-2459. The National Charts Weekly. It pays to know the score. SunJet International, still leading the way west with low airfares. On SunJet, you can fly from New York via Newark to Los Angeles from just $129 each way. And New York to Dallas on SunJet from just $99 each way. Call 1-800-4-SUNJET to reserve your seat. The City of Stars from just $129. The Lone Star from just $99. SunJet, we've got your ticket to the Stars, too. Call 1-800-4-SUNJET. Here's the opener. It's at seven furlongs. Had to wait for a rider. Robbie Davis got thrown off wrinkled brow, but he did ride the rest of the day, so they substitute. Here's the seven furlongs. Phillies and mass three and up, claiming tags 25 down to 20. They're up. Upstate Flyer gets out fast. There goes Mount Queenmore. Mount Queenmore grabs the lead. Upstate Flyer is second. Wrinkled Brow is coming up quickly, and Accipiter Star is right there on the inside fourth. Then there's a break of three back to the three trailers, Saratoga April, Ukrainian Gal, and Pleasant Courtney is at the back of the pack. Mount Queenmore pressed by Accipiter Star, and in between those two, Wrinkled Brow is right in there, mixing it up in between horses. It's two lengths back to Upstate Flyer fourth. The opening quarter, a contentious 22 and one fifth seconds. They hit the half mile. Mile pole. Exhibitor Star has a short lead. Mount Queenmore right there, battling away on the outside. Wrinkled Brow kept close third. Three lengths back. Upstate Flyer is running fourth. Saratoga April put to a drive fifth. Still seven lengths from the lead. Then a break of five more to Ukrainian Gal. Pleasant Courtney is far behind. Coming to the top of the
the stretch. It is Exhibitor Star head to head here with Mount Queen Bar, but here comes up State Flyer sweeping to them on the outside. Saratoga April is kicking in, following up State Flyer. Then farther back, it's Wrinkled Brow. Three sixteenths from the line now, and Mount Queen Bar couldn't keep up. The leader is Exhibitor Star by a half length at the eighth pole. Up State Flyer is right there with her on the outside. Saratoga April is third, 16th pole. Exhibitor Star turns back all challenges. It's going to be Exhibitor Star, a hard-earned victory, one by two. Saratoga April. Well, Harvey, this was your basic all in the family winner. Steve DeMauro owns the horse. His son trains the horse. I think I was more surprised the way Exhibitor Star won than the fact she won. She rarely showed uh, speed in, in her the last 10 races in the paper, but today she was quick from start to finish. Stephen L. put the corks on her. She jumps loose. She absolutely Absolutely right, and she used to tie it. Here she was pulling away. Sip it is star, the DeMauro family, and Shane Sellers. 11, 5, 80, 3, 80. Saratoga April picks up the pieces. 8 and 5. Upstate Flyer, $4. The exact of 3, 4. $120.40. In the second race, it's 6.5 furlongs. Maidens, 3 and up. New York State Breads. At the gate, number 8 manipulator was scratched, so you will get a Conso double if you use Exhibit as star. And they're off. Watrow's Ridge gets out first. Car Domain is also right there. And there goes Stinky Dinky. Stinky Dinky gets the lead. Cardamain pressing from the inside. Watrow's Ridge running in third. A break of four. DeMoment is now running in fourth. Ellicat's Banner takes fifth. Angry Cop back running in sixth. Followed by Temperate's Reel. And we pass him. Heading for the far turn. The leader is Stink. Stinky Dinky by a length and a half. Cardamain is in pursuit, chasing second by three. Watrow's Ridge is running in third. And then a break of three to Ellicott's Banner, who's now fourth toward the inside, about eight lengths from the lead now. Then uh, De Moment on the outside. Then a break of five to Temperance. Reel followed by We Pass em and Angry Cop. The field turning for home, and the leader is Stinky Dinky. By a length and a half, Cardamain is on the attack on the outside. Ellicott's Banner is coming up the inside now with his run. De Moment is there. Watch Rawls Ridge on the outside. They're at the eighth pole, and the leader is still Stinky Dinky. But on the outside, here comes Watch Rawls Ridge. Cardamain is in there in between horses and Ellicott's Banner. It is Watch Rawls Ridge and Stinky Dinky. Stinky Dinky, Watch Rawls Ridge. Watch Rawls Ridge is the winner. Stink. Well, Harvey, uh, Tom Durkin had a lot of fun calling the front runner Stinky. Dinky Dinky, but this was no laughing matter for Watrell's Ridge, a Philly beating the boys, first time out of the gate, and also Diane Nelson's first win of the spa season. Good, good job by Dennis Bride and Michael Watrell. I didn't even notice it was a Philly till the race was over, but she certainly ran well and went by the boys laughing. Watrell's Ridge, Michael Watrell, Dennis Bride, Diane Nelson's first. 47, 20, 18, 49, 40. Stinky Dinky, 7 and 4, 20. Ellicott's Banner, 360 to show. The exacto 6'9 is 358.20. Vanilla 6996, $150.40. Early double 36, 254.40. And the Conso double with the scratch to us, the 38, 1160. The third is a sprint. These are maiden Philly two year olds claiming tags 50 to 45. Back in the fourth position on the outside, Golden Bold is fifth, better than 10 lengths from the lead. Miss Eloper's down to her inside. Then farther back, it's Honor Society and Pediment Swan Lake. And Lil Nage is the trailer. The field turning for home. Wilson's Courage comes wide, and Terrace Flame inherits a clear lead. It's Terrace Flame in front now. Wilson's Courage couldn't keep up. And here comes Golden Bree, and coming hard. Golden Bree takes the lead just inside the eighth pole and gets away now by a length and a half. Leaving Terrace Flame behind in second, Wilson's Courage third, and the others straggling in behind. A sharp winner here, Golden Bree. Five lengths on the wire. Terrace. Well, Harvey, this was the old Paddock Club exactor. Richard McCarthy of Post Parade gave out the winner. I came up with a runner up, and the people who followed our advice cashed their tickets. And Richard McCarthy loves those firsters. Golden Bree, Hilmar C. Schmidt, John C. Kimmel, and Dennis Carr. Pretty good price here, 22 40, 10 88, 20. Terrace Flame, the one you like, five. 2380 Wilson's Courage 660 the 46 exact $140.60 the fourth's a mile and a 16th over the melon turf course three-year-olds claiming tag 75 down to 70 and they're off 
Head trip out to get the early lead. Natural fact is there and toward the outside gallant guest and Gito. They're moving for the first turn. Head trip is the leader. Natural fact is pressing second and three wide. It's gallant guest. Gito is four wide and special tribute saving ground all the way. Then it's best of music sixth on the inside. The Plainsman is seventh about six lengths from the early lead followed by Lucky Perry and Link Atariot. Well behind the rest is Brett's jet and he is under the whip. The opening quarter goes in 23 and two fifth seconds, making their way up the backstretch. Head trip loose on the lead by four. Natural fact is running second. Gallant guest on the outside is running in third. Then toward the inside, special tribute kept within five lengths of the lead. Then the plainsman and best of music is in between horses. On the outside, Gito is called on for a bit more run. Then Lucky Perry and Lincoln Terriot and uh, Brett's jet is uh, far behind and sluggish. The half in a strong 46 and four over the this good going head trip maintains the lead still there by two and a half lengths natural fact in full pursuit running second gallant guest is third best of music in behind horses now running in fourth the plainsman fifth on the outside lucky perry is strong but still seven lengths from the lead turning for home head trip trying to steal it wire to wire head trip cut loose for the final furlong and is there by three and a half best of music running room now second on the inside natural fact is running in third lucky perry is fourth still head trip Head trip by three with a sixteenth of a mile to the wire. Best of music doing his best, but it may be second best. Head trip weakening as they come down to the line, but head trip holds and wins by a diminishing length and a half. Best of music. Well, Harvey, this was deja vu all over again for Jose Santos. He won the stake yesterday, putting Via Borghese right on the lead. Does the exact same thing with the exact same results here with head trip. Head trip's a nice New York bred. Bobby Spiegel owns this gelding. He bred it. His mascot and sound. Phil Gleaves, the trainer, Jose Santos. 10 24 80, 340. Favorite best of music, 322 60. Natural fact, 480. The exact of favorites are inverted, 41 29 40. Granola 1 4 4 1, $13. Since the August yearling sale of 1990, Mockingbird Farm homebreds have won an Eclipse Award and millions for their owners. And thus far in 1994, the Mockingbird Farm homebreds have continued their winning ways. The good news is there are more where these came from, and they can be yours for the bidding at the OBS August yearling sale. So be in Ocala Monday, August 22nd for the annual Mockingbird Farm consignment. Mockingbird Farm, we take you to the winner's circle. New York itself, the play here, you've got to come, you can't have a thin skin. It's not a city that accepts mediocrity in any form. I was very fortunate. Uh, I played well. The fans reacted very positively to me. I get an opportunity in the booth to be a manager. I mean, I played for 23 years. I studied a lot of details. I get the real break of managing without having to have the consequences. Bill White joins Rusty to talk about his playing days, running the National League, the scooter, and much more. One of the better things that came out of the At The Play show, you get some great friendships out of it. the fifth this is a mile and eighth over the inner turf these are fillies and mares three and up bottom claiming turf is all in for thirty five thousand and they're off hot times are here is there there goes tote tappen quickly to get the lead it's tote tappen over to the rail dashing away by two lengths firm inquisition is second and verbal intrigue is coming up on the outside under the line for the first time tote tappen the leader by a length verbal intrigue moves into second a shaky queen threads her way through now to be third firm inquisition is fourth in between horses Didari caught four wide fifth going into the turn jen's flame hugs the hedge and saves ground in six while charles charm is running in seventh and down to her inside Assertive Dancer is eighth, followed by Gin Joint. Dana's Wedding is lingering near the back of the pack in the early going. She's better than 12 lengths from the lead now. Then it's Hot Times are here and pretty firm. Into the back stretch. Long shot, toe tapping, leading the way. Verbal intrigue there to continue the pressure. The quarter went in 23 and one, the half in 47 and three fifth seconds. A break of three back to a shaky queen who has settled down nicely, a relaxed third. Another two to Jen's Flame, fourth. Denari being helped along fifth. On the outside, Watrow's 
Farm launching a bid with a half mile to run. Assertive Dancer is seventh at the inside. Firm Inquisition. Den is wetting as clear running on the outside. Now beginning to pick it up as the field moves into the far turn. Verbal Intrigue is taken over. Toe Tappen is dropping back. On the outside, a shaky queen making her move now. There she goes. Second on the outside. Watrow's Charm is now running in third. Dana's Wedding continues a sustained bid. Now fourth on the outside. Only five lengths from the lead as they turn for home. A shaky queen handridden into the stretch by a confident Diane Nelson. The leader now getting away by two lengths. Watrow's Charm has moved into second on the outside. Verbal Intrigue back in third. Dana's Wedding is hard ridden but gaining no ground in fourth. Down to the final hundred yards now. It's a shaky queen leading the pack by three. Dana's Wedding coming hard on the outside but coming late. And here's the wire. A shaky queen. Yes, holding on. Well, Harvey, a shaky queen is the wind-up horse. You wind her up, she keeps running the same speed figure every time. Got a perfect trip in here. One to watch might be the runner-up, Dana's Wedding, who had to overcome a very unfavorable outside post. The bad news is these were the two fastest horses. They were also favored in second favor, and they ran one, two. If you were trying to get out, it was a problem. Shaky queen, the Juju Jen stable, Henry Carroll, Henry's the trainer. Diane Nelson picks up her second, 563, 42.80. Dana's Wedding, 343 dollars. Watrell's Charm, Georgina Frost, third, five dollars. Three women riders run one, two, three. The 511 is 2140. Here's the six. This is a sprint, three and up. State breads, non-winners of a race other than. They're off. Gate six gets out first. Windy Target is also right there with Karnak. Toward the inside, Concord's Prospect is there, along with Crafty Herald. Also up close, it's Pro on Ice. Crafty Herald, Concord's Prospect, Pro on Ice, and Karnak. The four of them scrimmaging for the lead. Gate six joins them on the outside, running in fifth position. Windy Target is now racing in sixth. Gifted Traven, seventh toward the inside. Royal Judge is eighth. Mont Shannon running in ninth position, followed by Harry Sherman, then Noble Roberto, six lengths back to New York appeal. Around the far turn now, Karnak caught three wide, disputing the pace. Pro on ice is right there with him, head to head. Concord's prospect toward the inside. Those three will hit the quarter pole together with gate six, just in behind them, running in fourth. Then it's Crafty Harold back running in fifth position. Windy target on the outside. Three sixteenths from the line. Karnak. Karnak in front now and roused to a short lead. Pro on ice continues to battle away toward the inside. Gate six is third. It's Karnak full out, but a determined pro on ice is trying to come back to him. Pro on ice Digging down deep. Karnak on the outside. Karnak, pro on ice, streak under the line together. Karnak gets the bob. Pro on ice right there. In Karnak, the Johnny Carson hunch player's horse. Uh, Harvey comes out of an August 5th race, which I think is a key race. He and several other horses showed speed that day and a closer's bias. The comfort behind horses picked up the pieces. He comes right back and runs very well this afternoon. Very logical horses. Karnak, the Bodo stable, Tim Kelly, and Mike Smith, the jockey, wins it. And the winner returns seven. 44380. Pro on ice worked 46. My clocker friend tells me it was 23 and 23. He needed that 23 in the stretch, came up a little short. 58420, windy target 680. The 75 exacta, $30 and 40 cents. Here's the seven. This is seven furlongs, Phillies and Mass, three and up. Non-winners of a race other than maiden claiming a starter. They're off. Susan Valley gets out first. The Bink, speed from the inside. On the outside, recognizable is there. Then Indian Paradise, Lady Tory, followed by Tornado Cat. And at the back of the pack is Fleet Marguerite. The Bink in front, Susan Valley, right there in hand, second, two and a half lengths. And the favorite, recognizable, is laying just off the lead third. To her inside, Indian Paradise is fourth. And it's four lengths back to Lady Tory, who's near the back of the pack with Tornado Cat and Fleet Marguerite. The bank in front through a quarter of 22 and three-fifths seconds. Susan's Valley has been right there with her, her shadow on the outside. Another two and a half to Recognizable, still sitting third. Recognizable now the favorite, making her move toward the lead as they race midway round the far turn. The half in 45 and four-fifths seconds. Moving toward the top of the stretch. The bank under hard pressure from Susan Valley. And now Susan Valley takes over. But Recognizable is right there on the outside. Lady Tory is picking it up at the top of the stretch. 
stretch. Susan Valley is put to the test. Recognizable driving second on the outside. Susan Valley under the whip. Recognizable there on the outside coming to her. Those two passing the eighth pole together. Susan Valley digging down deep. Recognizable giving her all. Recognizable forging to the front as they come down to the line. It is recognizable the winner by a hard fought neck. Susan Valley was second. Well, Susan Valley couldn't hold off the latest winner from the Shug McGahee assembly line, but this is why it's sometimes paid to, to read the fine print in the uh, program. This horse was actually taking a drop in class. She faced non-winners of two last time out. Today, non-winners of one Harvey. She didn't win, but she threw in a very strong effort. Last time she did, this time she meets lesser horses and she wins it. Take nothing away from Susan Valley. That's a very gutsy filly. But recognizable, Ogden Mills Fip, Shug McGahee, Mike Smith, the jockey. 342, 62, 20. Susan Valley, 362, 60. Indian Paradise, $3 to show. The exact is 7-3, favorites in orders 12.80. And the pick three, the old 5-7-7, 25% takeout. We'll give you for picking three, $29. Daily Racing Form Thoroughbred Action, brought to you by the Daily Racing Form, America's turf authority for 100 years running. Even when the race is over, it's sometimes hard to tell who won. But the best way to pick the winners before they hit the wire is with the new look Daily Racing Form. More workouts with rankings, record at the track and at the distance, expanded race conditions, additional fractional time, front bandages, more European coverage, and more of everything you need to get the complete picture on every race. So before you try to pick your next winner, pick up the Daily Racing Form and see how the best just got even better. The all-new Subaru Legacy has the traction to turn a winter storm into a day at the beach. And a day at the beach? Well, Subaru all-wheel drive is the ultimate safety feature. It reacts instantly, transferring power automatically from the wheels that slip to the wheels that grip. So all you have to do is enjoy the drive. The all-season, all-fun, all-wheel drive Subaru Legacy. The beauty of all-wheel drive. Now, more than ever, you can own quality thoroughbred racehorses. Racing's hottest stable, LSI Gold, introduces the most innovative concept in racing today. Affordable thoroughbred general partnerships. Right now, LSI Gold is among the leading owners in races won and purses earned. LSI Gold's formula for success is simple. Select development and training of potential high-earning sound thoroughbreds. Remember, the time to call LSI Gold is now, because winning is everything. Here's the featured eighth, mile and an eighth over the inner turf, three and up, now winners of two. And they're off. Trevelyan comes out quickly. Rugged Bugger is there toward the inside, and in between those two, it's inside the beltway. Moving by us for the first time, Rugged Bugger out to take a short lead. Trevelyan hard held to lay off the pacemaker in second. Down toward the inside and side. The Beltway is running in third per pop fourth. Devil's Bow under stout restraint running in fifth position. Beware that Quest is rank and has checked hard while in behind horses now. Taken wide into the turn was Golden Plover. Adventuristic in between horses. Sangre de Toro settles in down inside. Rise to Rule is second to last and Mr. Hydro is the trailer. Rugged Bugger loping along easily on the lead. The first quarter was an easy 24 and two-fifths seconds. Rugged Bugger in front. Trevelyan's alongside, but he's only offering mild pressure here. Then Per Pop creeping up into third on the outside. Inside the beltway, down to the inside. He's now running in third. Per Pop is fourth. Devil's Bow reserved in fifth position. Adventuristic is running in sixth. Sangre de Toro is seventh. The ass went, half went in 49 and three-fifths seconds. Moving into the far turn now, and inside the beltway has slipped through on the inside to take a short lead. It is inside the beltway in front. Rugged Bugger counters to come back. Trevelyan hung out there three wide now. Devil's Bow is in behind the lead, running in fourth. Adventuristic called on for a bit more run in fifth. Sangre de Toro six toward the inside. Go 
Golden Plover is seven lengths from the lead. Then Mr. Hydro and Rise to Rule. Off the turn and into the stretch. Trevelyan on the outside. Inside the beltway on the inside. Those two full tilt now as they race past the eighth pole. Devil's Bow is now running in third. Trevelyan's under a furious left hand here by Jean-Luc Samine and has rested a short lead from inside the beltway. Inside the beltway, giving his all as they come down to the line. Trevelyan too tough and holding on. Trevelyan wins. Out gaming inside the beltway to the line. Rugged bugger was there. Jerry Bailey aboard uh, inside the beltway nearly stole the race here with a very aggressive move, cutting the corner on the inside at the top of the stretch. Uh, Harvey, if he had stole the race, he would have uh, stolen the spotlight from the Team Morgata stable and the cast of thousands who appeared in the winner's circle after this race. Nothing I'd rather see than huge crowds in the winner's circles. We need all the owners we can get, and uh, Mr. Morgata says these are new owners, so good luck to them. Buy some more. Jeffrey Jones, David Rothenberg, Tony Morgata, Jean-Luc Samin, 580-383. Inside the Beltway, 565-20. Rugged Bugger, 540 to show. The exact of 7.6 is $29. The triple, 764, $185. Here's the finale there. This is seven furlongs. These are three-year-olds claiming tags 25 down to 20. Path and Panico out fast. Brush cut is also right there. Lucky favorite and down on the inside, Bay Park. Leaving the chute and moving up the back stretch. The leader is Panico on the far outside. Portage Path is right there, and Brush Cut is now running in third position. Toward the inside, Bay Park sent up toward the lead now from fourth. Lucky Favorite being helped along in fifth, dropping five and a half lengths from the lead. Slew's Gold is sixth. Art History is seventh with a clear aim on the outside. Five lengths back to Lost Dutchman and Stately Wager. Prioritizers in between those two. The quarter was a quick one. 22 and one fifth seconds. Panico and Bay Park going at it. Panico short lead. Bay Park right there pressing from the inside. Three lengths back to brush cut on the outside. Art History levels off and Art History now hitting his best stride moving into third. Farther back it's brush cut now in fourth. On the outside Portage Path moving into fifth. Lose gold is sixth. Prioritizer is launching a wide bid from the back of the pack. Turning for home now. Bay Park down on the inside. Art History on the outside and Panico in between them. Those three headlong into the final furlongs. Blues Gold is now fourth, passing the eighth pole. Bay Park determined at the rail, stubbornly holding on to the lead. Panico and Art History, then Slew's Gold and Portage Path. Bay Park would not be denied victory here. A valiant winner, two lengths clear of Art History, Panico third. The rail is perhaps the most tricky place to be in seven furlong races. This, in my opinion, was a terrific ride by Mike Luzzi, uh, patiently riding his horse, shooting the gap, saving the ground. This guy has made a a real good impression, Harvey, in his first Saratoga meet. And Mike Luzzi's a man who did a lot of riding in Maryland, and his trainer, Dick Dutrow, for many years, the best Maryland hat. He's now up with us and doing okay. Bay Park, Meadowvale Stable, Luzzi and Dutrow. 64280. Art History, 76380. And Panico, $5 to show. The 111, these are actually coupled horses. $45.20. They ran the last time together. Doubles Chalky, 7-1-18-40. Triple 111 and 12, $313. Three people hit that pick six on track, but seven hit that pick six off track. Let's look at those numbers. Ten winners, 6,500. All they really needed was the uh, Golden Bree, the John Kimmel Firster. Five correct, 355 tickets, which obviously didn't have that. They received $61. There's your jockey standings. Pretty close going into the next week. Bailey, 25. Santos, 23. Mike Smith, 22. Julie right behind and Richard Migliori. Oh, tomorrow night on Inside Racing, I have Dean Wayne Lucas. Good enough? Very good. John Preachy, who must appear on any yeah. show. Travers, three-year-olds, got to have him on. Pretty good show. D. Wayne Lucas, even with me interviewing, has never done a bad interview, and this is no exception. Your pick on Channel 13, you don't do until the morning of the... Tuesday for Wednesday. So you don't know even who you're going to pick yet. Can't, if I knew, Harvey, I couldn't tell He's you. He's running 50% on the station. That's pretty darn good. Tomorrow, if you're in the neighborhood, 
Eleanor Penn is going to take all that money. She won an Angel Penn and Junior's double the other day. <laughs> going to contribute to the Thoroughbred Retirement Foundation. They'll have their dog show here. Mike Smith, I believe. Jerry Bailey. Richard Maiori. It's a lot of fun. If you're in the neighborhood, come and give a few bucks to the charity. Perhaps Eleanor will share another triple with. I think she had the triple for two hundred thousand. I'm only kidding. Good night. May the horse be with you. still don't know. I'm sure a lot of people, if it rains, will change their minds if they still have a chance. Uh, well, that's possible, but you know, Harvey, we have, we only need four horses in here to have a real great horse race, and they're in place, would so Bill, I'm not worried Bull run in the mud, in your opinion? Uh, I think he should, yes, but Saratoga slop is a little different than other slop. We shall see. Here's the hat. Travis coming up, but we had ten today. Get to it after this. National Charts Weekly, the essential tool for multi-track handicappers. Weekly charts from seven major tracks, North American and European stakes recaps, a week in review editorial, a convenient horse index, and more. From daily racing form, of course. Order your subscription today. Call 1-800-283-2459. The National Charts Weekly. It pays to know the score. Since the August yearling sale of 1990, Mockingbird Farm homebreds have won an Eclipse Award and millions for their owners. And thus far in 1994, the Mockingbird Farm homebreds have continued their winning way. The good news is there are more where these came from, and they can be yours for the bidding at the OVS August yearling sale. So be in Ocala Monday, August 22nd for the annual Mockingbird Farm consignment. Mockingbird Farm, we take you to the winner's circle. This is the first race today. This was a steeplechase. Andy Byer came into my office and said, Cold Beauty cannot lose. We saw Cold Beauty before we went to commercial. Threw the ride a first time around. Winner, Dunn's Cap. Jay Fisher, Sean Clancy, 845 and 3. Jolie Summer, 20, 26, 60. Fifth Creek, 240. The exacta there, 3 fours, 225, 60. Now we're on to the second. This is a sprint, three-year-olds, claiming tags 25 down to 20. Stout move. Coming toward the top of the stretch, Sky Cry, and Mr. Flintlock there is right with them on the outside. All Man continues to close as the field comes to the 3 16th pole. Sky Cry, Mike Smith shakes him up now and goes to the left handed whip, still holding on to the lead by length and a half. He turned back Mr. Flintlock. Now All Man has moved into second, but it's Sky Cry, the favorite at the 16th pole, with a three length lead, and they're not going to get to him. Sky Cry is going to go wire to wire here. With well, Harvey, I tried to beat Sky Cry. I'm still waiting for the wheel to fall off. In the meantime, he's won three of his last four. Uh, he's got to be racing's version of the end of Jazz of Bunny. It just keeps going on, this cold. Easy win. Barbara Davis, Gaspar Mochera, Mike Smith, Sky Cry. Favorite, 322, 40, 220. All Man, 340, 320. Creston House, 460. 27 exact to 12 even. Quinella, 2772. 860. That early double, 3 and 2, 1920. One of two two-year-old races, at least sprints, for these are maiden twos in the third. They're off. Sutter's Pond gets out first. Merciful Judge is there. Peruvian down toward the inside. Then Hero and Me and Milwaukee. Up the back stretch. Peruvian gets to the early lead. It's Peruvian by a length. Merciful Judge in full pursuit second. There goes Milwaukee now to move in to be third on the inside. And the favorite, Sutter's Pond, settles three lengths off the lead on the outside. Hero and Me is the trailer as Peruvian leads the way through a quarter in 22 and one-fifth seconds. Peruvian three-quarters of a length. Merciful Judge pressing harder second on the outside Milwaukee right there running in third and favorite Sutter Pond remains well within striking range in fourth position then Hero and Me coming to the top of the stretch Peruvian 
still showing the way, but on the outside, Merciful Judge, Milwaukee is room on the inside. Crone wheels Sutter's Pond to the outside for clear running. At the top of the stretch now, four of them in contention for the lead. Milwaukee down toward the inside. In between horses, Peruvian, Merciful Judge is there. Sutter's Pond is put to a full out drive on the outside. The leader is Peruvian. Sutter's Pond coming hard, but Peruvian still leads with less than 100 yards to come. Sutter's Pond will be second best. Peruvian first under Much the gnashing of teeth here when uh, Julie Crone took Buck Sutter's Pond, the full brother to end sweet, leaving him too much to do and leaving Pat Day alone on the lead down the back. You can see uh, Pat is between horses here, but he's always saving and he gets it. And he was able to toy with the other two and wait for Julie and Peruvian wins at Dogwood Stable. Peter Vestal has his first winner up here, Pat Day aboard. 7.62.40.210. Sutter's Pond, Billy Batchett still hasn't got one. 2.20.210. Merciful Judge, 2.10. The exacto, one in six, $13, double two one, 16.60. On to the fourth, this is a mile and three sixteenths, three year olds and up, claiming tags 35 to 30. lead through three quarters in one, 11, and four. On the outside, Dakota right there. Ambush Alley now levels off, and here comes Ambush Alley with his rally third. Carney's Kid fourth. Yaros is under the whip fifth. Off the turn into the stretch. Maraud trying to hold the lead, but here's Dakota, and here's Ambush Alley. Ambush Alley and Dakota. Maraud down on the inside. Then farther back, Yaros is fourth. Inside the eighth pole, it's Dakota with a narrow lead. Ambush Alley on the outside. It'll be those two. Ambush Alley stuck his head in front at the 16th pole, but Dakota counters to come back. Photo finish. Heads bobbing Well, it appeared at least momentarily that uh, Vestal and Day were about to get their second straight, uh, breaking Vestal's 0 for 19 Schneid in the race before, but as bad as Julie's was in the third race, she was good here. She timed this real well with Ambush Alley, a shipper from Maryland who makes the last run and is just going to get it on the line. Crone turning the tables on Pat day with this one. Friend Bob Bain has called this one two before the race. Fortunately for him, he didn't bet. Ambush Alley wins it. Sam Rogers Jr., Mary Epler, Julie Crone. 23-88-84-40. Decoder, 583-60. Maraud, 340. Exacta 53, 133-80. Quinella 3553, $58. like getting into a good bestseller. And your Ford dealer has five of the ten bestsellers in America. Not surprising. They wrote the book on value. Now's the time to save on your Ford dealer's full line of best-selling trucks, like the Ford Explorer, the F-150, and the Ranger. This is a real page-turner. Every truck is built Ford tough, and all are number one in their class. Your Ford dealer's had five of the ten bestsellers in America for six straight years. See your Ford dealer and see for yourself. A week, a month, the rest of the season, who knows when the strike will end. But remember, for as long as it lasts, Sports Channel will deliver the action you want. In August, catch Mets minor league ball with the Norfolk Tides and the Binghamton Mets. Plus, new editions of baseball's greatest games, featuring Seaver's 300th win and the Mets clinching the 86 NL East. For more Mets news, it's Modell's inside pitch and Rusty Staub at the plate. Plus, get breaking strike news with hourly new sport reports. During the strike, stick with Sports Channel. Here's the fifth. This is Maiden, two year olds again, and they are sprinting. And they're off. Northern Ensign gets out fast, and so does China Bowl. Off slowly was relocate. Up the back stretch, China Bowl gets to the early lead. There goes Nuclear Treaty now, second down the inside. Northern Ensign between horses. Reality Road on the far outside, disputing the pace fourth. Then it's Skipper coming on through from fifth. Star Standard sixth. Farthest out, Preacher Man moving from seventh. And after that flat-footed beginning, relocate is the trailer. The quarter went in 22 and one-fifth seconds, and as they round the far turn, Northern Ensign 
Still holding on to the lead. Northern Ensign in front by a half length. There goes Reality Road now on the attack. Second on the outside. China Bowl is now running in third position. Then farther back, Skipper fourth toward the inside. Preacher Man. Star Standard is a wide sixth, but beginning to gain ground. Nuclear Treaty has dropped back to be near the back of the pack after a vain attempt at the lead earlier. Then Relocate coming through between horses. Northern Ensign hard ridden to mid stretch. Still holding on to the lead by a half length. On the outside, Reality Road is on the roof. Full out drive but it's still Northern Ensign holding on to the lead. Reality Road, then farther back, Star Standard and Preacher Man, 100 yards from home. It's still Northern Ensign showing the way, and it's going to be Northern Ensign to win it. Preacher Man. The greenest grass was Northern Ensign when he made his debut back in June, Harvey, but uh, trainer John DiStefano put the blinkers on today, trained him a little bit, ran as straight as a string. Meantime, Star Standard, the third finisher on in here, still on my horses to watch list. Northern Ensign, the blinkers certainly did. It showed speed first time today, not green. JCJ Stable, John M.D. Stefano Jr., Mike Luzzi, Northern Ensign, 11.46.20 and 4. Preacher Man picks up some pieces here. 6.43.60, Star Standard, 3.40. The 4.6 Exacta, 95.20. Six is a mile and a sixteenth over the Mellon Turf Course. Three-year-olds and up, non-winners of two races to 20,000, a mile or over on the turf since January of 93. Roman Envoy bounces right out to the lead. Cobblestone Road is second as they race for the first turn. Roman Envoy makes the lead and makes it rather easily and leads the way by a length and a half. Cobblestone Road second. Scott the Great caught wide going into the turn. Brazeni is there saving ground. And then it's excellent tipper and the early trailer is Nijinsky's Gold who's taken in hand as they round the first turn as Roman Envoy is on the lead by two. The opening quarter relatively easy. 23 and four fifth seconds. Roman Envoy into the back stretch with a two-length lead. Cobblestone Road running second and Scott the Great up close to the pace on the outside. Brazeni is fourth. In behind that group, it's excellent tipper drafting in behind horses, and Najinsky's gold is the trailer with five furlongs to run. Roman Envoy continues to lead the way alone on the lead through a half mile of 47 and one fifth seconds. Cobblestone Road has remained second throughout. Scott the Great poised third on the outside. Braz and he's at a good trip in behind the lead. To the outside goes Najinsky's gold as they enter the far turn. He's beginning to move now, and it's excellent tipper wide open here, four and a half lengths from front to back. It has been Roman Envoy the whole way and Cobblestone Road chasing the whole way. Brazeni is right there in behind the lead at the inside. Scott the Great. Najinsky's gold is revving up, but he's taken five wide into the stretch. Off the turn into the stretch. Roman Envoy put to a full out drive. Najinsky's gold on a charge on the outside. And Brazeni at the eighth pole. Roman Envoy still holding on to the lead. Bailey pleading for 100 more yards. Brazeni and Najinsky's gold coming hard on the outside. It's still Roman Envoy. Roman Envoy. Oh, Stewards are going to take a long look at this one. Watch the horse in the middle. Shane Sellers. One thing we now know, Shane Sellers not ready for Broadway. <laughs> That's interesting, Harvey, but uh, it's true. Roman Envoy does come out under the left-handed whip of Jerry Bailey, uh, and unfortunately, at the same time, Najinsky's goal comes in under Robbie Davis. It seemed that the Stewards were deliberating whether to take both down or to leave it alone. They left it alone. If Angel Cordero Jr. had been on the middle horse, he would have stood up, disappeared into the great beyond. They probably would have taken them both down. But they let it stand. And I really, I kind of called it that they would let it stand as I looked at it, even though I could see a little bit of trouble with the rider. Never stopped riding. And the winner is the horse that gets away with the easy fractions. Roman Envoy, Fred Hooper, Phil Serp, Jerry Bailey. 763-20-260. Najinsky's goal, 242-20. Brazzani, 260 to show. The exact to two three, fifteen dollars and twenty cents. Seventh at a mile and eighth. These are three and up state breads, non-winners of two other men. And uh, they're off. Kristen's baby uh, out first. Flying groom is there. Nickel defense on the outside. Robbie Davis sending Renaissance Bob toward the lead. Into the first turn, Sonny Deputy now benefiting from his inside post has taken a short lead at Sonny Deputy in front. Alongside its flying groom, three wide Renaissance Bob, 
McNichol defense caught four wide round the first turn, and the favorite, more to tell, is nestled neatly in behind the front four. Then a break of two and a half lengths back to Kristen's baby on the outside. Green thoughts at the rail, and another five back to Regal Mike the trailer. The opening quarter went in 23 and four fifth seconds with Sunny Deputy and Flying Groom. Nickel defense still there, well out into the track. Renaissance Bob is up close and in between horses. More to tell continues to rate comfortably in fifth. Just in behind him, it's Kristen's baby, followed by... Green Thoughts and Regal Mike is still at the back of the pack. Flying Groom has taken a short lead after a half mile of 47 and three-fifths seconds. Sunny Deputy, Nickel Defense trying to keep up. More to tell, still unhurried in third position. Renaissance Bob is tailed off in the fourth. Kristen's Baby on the inside. Around the far turn. And now it's Flying Groom, the leader by a length. But now Mike Smith makes his move with More to tell. There goes More to tell, moving willingly to the lead. And More to tell indeed takes the lead as they come to the top of the stretch. Flying Groom trying to stay with him. Then it's nickel defense. Kristen's baby now beginning to hit his best stride as the field turns for home. More to tell off the turn in front to length and a half. Flying groom working hard down toward the inside. Then Kristen's baby farther back. It's Regal Mike fourth at the eighth pole. More to tell still in front. Regal Mike is coming on late. So is Kristen's baby. More to tell is laboring now. Here's Kristen's baby to take a short lead. Regal Mike on the outside. It's Kristen's baby. Regal Mike. Kristen's baby he wins by a neck. Regal Mike. Well, it's the kind of story you, you like to root for in this game. Uh, trainer Eddie Barker, who I don't know who this gentleman is, but he showed up one day at Belmont Park, reached in for 35000 took Kristen's baby, and promptly gets him through two New York bred conditions. Non-winners are one, non-winners are two. As for the favorite players, more to tell, uh, was really obstreperous at the gate. They had to change his equipment. It probably didn't help him any. He said it when Kristen's baby won its last. It was a beautiful claim, and as you say, walks through both conditions. Michael Tigri, Ed Barker, and Mike Luzzi, who's making a nice debut season here. Kristen's Baby, 765, 320. Regal Mike, where he likes to be, 860 and 4. More to tell, 280. The 4 7 is $65. Pick 3, 4, 2, 4, 141. dollars Daily Racing Form Thoroughbred Action, brought to you by the Daily Racing Form, America's turf authority for 100 years running. In the world of handicapping, you've got to make the right moves at the right time. Speed is of the essence, knowledge is power, and buyer's speed figures are the key. Now, the key is in the form. Buyer speed figures come to Daily Racing Form. Pick it up today. Daily Racing Form, where winners come to play. The symbol of success is the OBS. At the sales. On the track. The symbol of success is the OBS. The Ocala Breeders Yearling Sale starts Monday, August 22nd. Get more for your yearling dollar in Ocala. The eight's an overnight handicap. They're going a mile and eighth. He's a three and up. <laughs> the entry, Jackson Fort and Chavez Federal Funds and Luzzi. Grand Jewel, Pat Day, Classy Envoy Migliori. Key contender, Jerry Bailey. At even money, Michelle Compass, John Velasquez. They're off. Jackson Fort gets out first. Jackson Fort is sent to the lead and establishes it. Down toward the inside, Grand Jewel is up close early. Michelle can pass is there on the outside. Key contender is up close. Classy Envoy is in behind the wall of front runners. And the early trailer will be Federal Funds. Jackson Port, the leader, moving at a comfortable early pace with Key Contender on the outside. And Key Contender is moving readily toward the lead now as they make their way into the backstretch. The first quarter was an idling 25 seconds flat. Laid back pace in the early going, and Key Contender has 
come on to take the lead. The tempo appears to be quickening. Jackson Port is running along in second. Grand Jewel off the rail third. Michelle can pass is there on the outside. And then it's Classy Envoy, only four and a half lengths for the lead. It's another six back to Federal Funds. First quarter went in 25. The second quarter went in 23 and four fifth seconds. The tempo has indeed increased. Key contender with a short lead now. Jackson Port trying to stick with them on the inside. Grand Jewel is right there. Michelle can pass is now asked for more run on the outside. Classy Envoy still only five lengths from the lead. Around the fire turn. And it is Key Contender coming under harder pressure from Grand Jewel. Grand Jewel and Key Contender head-to-head -head three furlongs from the line. It's three lengths back to Jackson Port. Now running in third. On the outside, Michelle can pass is working hard in fourth. Then farther back, it's Classy Envoy. Federal funds as the trailer. The field turns for home. Grand Jewel on the outside and Key Contender on the inside. Those two coming to mid-stretch together. Pat Day riding very confidently with Grand Jewel, and Grand Jewel under a hand ride as the lead. Key Contender is under a full-out drive by Bailey, and Key Contender is responding. Key Contender coming back on the inside to win it. Grand Jewel. Day bashing was in vogue after this result, Harvey, but I think if you go back and look, I know I'd like to speak to Neil Howard. Tom said he's confidently looking back, Pat Day, but he's going to veer in sharply to the left. I think he went off in his right four because he didn't stride out. He lost his action. A horse of this quality will not lose a length in a very short period of time like that. And a mutual acquaintance of ours needed Pat Day for the pick six. That is a very bad beat. Tough beat. Winner is key contender, the Rokeby Stable, Mac Miller, Jerry Bailey, 4-2-42-10. Grand Jewel, 2-62-10. Federal funds, another check for Murray Garrett, 2-10 to show. To exact the 4-2, $8.80. Now we're going on at the 15th running of the Yotto Handicap. $75,000 add a mile and eighth. Melon Turf, Phillies and Mass, three and up state breads. Irish Lynette, John Velasquez, take out the other part of the entry. Parts, Belle Nuise, Jean-Luc Samin, 1D Flawless, Mike Luzzi. Lots of talc, maple, silky feather, Smith. All Tango, Chavez, put the powder to it, Santo. It's personal, Julie Crone. Lifeboat, and Weewak Harbor, out. Great Triumph Maiori, Charret at Day. Put the power to it, and all tango break alertly. Lots of talc there toward the inside. Here's Great Triumph streaking toward the lead as they move under the line the first time. Great Triumph will be the pacemaker. On the inside, it's put the powder to it. And alongside her, it's personal is now running in third. Irish Leonard is up close in fourth. Alt Tango is fifth. Silky Feather sixth on the outside. Lots of talc is now running in seventh, followed by Charette, then Belle Nui. One de Flawless is at the back of the pack, making their way toward the back stretch. Great triumph in front to length. It's personal stalking intently, running in second. Put the power to it, is reserved in third position. And Irish Linnet right up there with the pacemaker. Solid fractions here. The first quarter went in 23 and 1. Great triumph still there, but it's personal still hounding her the whole way. They continue up the back stretch after a half of 46 and 4. Irish Linnet and put the powder to it, running third and fourth. The break of five to Silky Feather. All Tango is called on for a bit more. She's moving through an opening toward the inside. Belle Nui is better than 10 lengths from the lead, and then it's her mate 1D Flawless, followed by Charette and Latsa Talk around the far turn, and it's personal overtakes Great Triumph and takes the lead, but here comes Irish Linnet with her move now, second on the outside Great Triumph is back to third, put the powder to it, is called on for more, but she's still six lengths from the lead, then it's all Tango under a hard drive at the inside as the field turns for home, it's personal to catch, under the whip and in front by two, Irish Linnet full out, second on the outside with a furlong to run, but the powder to it is running third. All Tango is fourth. It's still it's personal, but Irish Linnet is getting closer, and Irish Linnet is in front at the 16th pole. Irish Linnet coming down to the line with the lead. It's personal second, All Tango third. Irish Linnet, the winner, three quarters but of the But the game line. takes away. Sometimes it gives back. Harvey, uh, Leo lost a four-star Dave for the rest of the year, but he's got Irish Linnet. She is about to win her fourth Yaddo in six Session and she's about to win her fifth career race at Saratoga in five consecutive years. Leo O'Brien, a trainer of legends here at Saratoga. Irish Lynn.
than that. Austin Delaney, Leo, and Leo's future son-in-law, John Velasquez, rode the heck out of it to get it up because the second horse ran very game. A 5 3 40, 2 40. It's personal 6 20, 3 80. All tango 5 20. Exact to 17-3320, triple 175, $412. We're gonna stay on the melon for the finale. The finale is at a mile and three sixteenths. These are maidens three and up. And they're off. Hawkeye Bay pinched back at the start. Ichabod Ryder came out smoothly to the lead, and here comes Crossgate from in between horses. Aronimink is running eagerly in the early going, and farthest out, Golden Ice has Skate for Joy is taken back. Under the line for the first time, Crossgate and Aronimink will duel for the early lead. And Golden Ice is taken neatly in behind him, over to the inside to save ground in third. Ichabod Ryder is racing in fourth position. Skate for Joy now, fifth on the outside, followed by Winterton and Wild Charles Sea Trip. Then it's Hawkeye Bay, Strauss between horses. Fifth set, four wide, heading into the back stretch. Alley Red the trailer. And the leader is now. Crossgate, who opens up by two and a half lengths. The opening quarter went in 23 and one-fifth seconds. Crossgate, the leader. Arana Mink running in second. Golden Ice, reserve third on the outside. Skate for Joy is moving through an opening toward the rail. And then there's a break of three to Watrall Sea Trip. Hawkeye Bay now beginning to thread his way through in between horses. Winterton is there, about eight lengths from the lead, followed by Ichabot Ryder, fifth set with clear running on the outside. Strauss and Alley Red, the half and 47 and two-fifth seconds. They're entering the far turn. Crossgate is still the leader. Golden Ice revving up now. Second on the outside. There goes Golden Ice making a move toward the lead. Aronimink is running in third. Watrall Sea Trip now has moved up in the pack to be fourth. Hawkeye Bay fifth toward the inside. Skate for Joy on the outside is running in sixth. Then fifth set Winterton and Strauss. The field turning for home. Crossgate still in front but Golden Ice is right there on the outside as they make the turn into the stretch. Golden Ice now quickens up to take the lead by half length. Crossgate second. Skate for Joy has rallied now third on the outside, Hawkeye Bay, fourth toward the rail, Watrall Sea Trip is running in fifth, Crossgate is running a brave race today, as a nose in front at the 16th pole, Golden Ice is not done yet, here comes Skate for Joy, here comes Winterton, here comes Hawkeye Bay, here's the wire photo finish. Golden Leading Ice jockey there. Bailey is about to get his triple by putting Golden Ice in just great position behind him, battle leaders. Uh, Skate for Joy, who had a tough trip last time out, got a better trip today under Velasquez, but as for the tough trip, that was reserved for the favorite, Hawkeye Bay. Put them on your list. When you're on a bad run, I think the trainer and the rider, they get, that's what happens. This horse had problems out of the gate and never really was in the race, even though it finished third, probably the best. But not today. Golden Ice, Jerry Himes, Scotty Shulop, Scotty Trains, Jerry Bailey's triple. 945, 320. Skate for Joy, 1045, 80. Hawkeye Bay, 280 to show. The exact is the value. The 11 sevens, $111. Double one, late double one eleven twenty nine forty triple eleven seven four two hundred and forty six dollars. Pick six information. Not only was it hit. There's a lot of money in that pool, considering there was no carryover. Take a look at that. Two winners, 53 and a half apiece. That means there was 107 in there. Five winner tickets, 79 winners, $499. There's your jockey standings. Jerry took a big leap today, has five now on Santos and Smith, and looks to be headed for the riding title. Would you agree with that? Uh, probably. Well, he's, you know, he's, he's riding the better horses, I would think, thus far. Well, that's far. generally what makes leading riders. Well, well yeah, but, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm so Sort of rooting for Santos because this is this represents a comeback for him, Harvey, and he seems to be riding the races, whereas right. the other guys riding the horses. So. As you know, I'm responsible for Santos's success. Well, of course, as soon as you get off, I this. took a strain off the agent and helped him work for Santos. <laughs> you have any pick for tomorrow? You know, I needed Majestico last week uh, in, in the middle leg of a pick three, and it didn't work out too well because the race was paceless and he went like a hundred wide at the top of the lane. Tomorrow, I'm hoping for just a little bit more pace, but I have to give Majestico a chance to make amends in tomorrow's sixth. Okay, thank you. Incidentally, wasn't D. Wayne great on the show on Inside Racing? He's always good. Northeast State, Duke, all of that <laughs> he stuff. He really no. was good. <laughs> good night. May the horse be with you.
Sunjet International, still leading the way west with low airfares. On Sunjet, you can fly from New York via Newark to Los Angeles from just $129 each way. And New York to Dallas on Sunjet from just $99 each way. Call 1-800-4-SUNJET to reserve your seat. The City of Stars from just $129. The Lone Star from just $99. Sunjet, we've got your ticket to the stars, too. Call 1-800-4-SUNJET. Goof and D. Wayne Lucas did refer to it when he stepped up to the podium. Believe it or not, with the small field that we had and with the name horses that we had, somebody misspelled Tabasco Cat, spelled it T-O. Wow, that's the kind of meeting it's been. Right back with today's first. <laughs> National Charts Weekly, the essential tool for multi-track handicappers. Weekly charts from seven major tracks, North American and European stakes recaps, a week in review editorial, a convenient horse index, and more. From daily racing form, of course. Order your subscription today. Call 1-800-283-2459. The National Charts Weekly. It pays to know the score. A thoroughbred farm. Franchise. Wild again, slow and go. You've got the proven veterans. But it's still Seattle slew. And you've got the promising rookies. So free, who has Even when you've got the talent, there's always building that team that never stops. Our biggest fans are our clients, and we've got to perform for them every day. And that's why I can say to every client of this farm, at Three Chimneys, the focus is your success. Considering the fact that we lost all the turf races, we really didn't do that badly today. First one was a mile and an eighth, Phillies and Mass three and up, claiming tags 25 down to 20. Number five to Miss Covergirl, who's getting closer in third as they come for the head of the stretch. Take a powder on the outside, now takes the lead. Huxter Rose is dropping back. Miss Covergirl on the outside, they're in the stretch. Take a powder on the inside. Miss Covergirl on the outside, it's take a powder in front. On the outside is Miss Covergirl gaining ground. Huckster Rose is back into third, coming for the 16th pole. Take a powder under the whip. On the outside, it's Miss Cover Girl. They're coming down for the line. Take a powder, trying to hold on. Miss Cover Girl is second. They come for the line. It's tight. On the inside, it looked like take a powder. Tough one to on. call. It doesn't get much better than that, but a five horse field. But look at how close these two were at the end. But it's the chalk that gets it. Take a powder. The jock farm, Gaspar Mochera, Mike Smith. 443 and 240. Miss Cover Girl, 320, 240. Huckster Rose, 280 to show. Exact to one threes, fifteen dollars. Second race, six and a half furlongs. These are maiden fillies and mares, three and up, and they're state breads. Gorgeous. Then on the outside, it's a classy charade as they hit the head of the stretch. Miss Diana A is in front. Go Bid is dropping back. Hillis Lee on the outside moves into second. As they pass the eighth pole, Miss Diana A is drawing away here. It's Miss Diana A by six lengths. Hillis Lee is racing second. Then on the outside, it's classy charade, but Miss Diana A. Loves Trainer the Bobby today. Barbera just missed by a nose getting off a of Saratoga Schneid in the first, but he makes more than makes amends in the second race. Look at the pedigree on this filly, and she went off at four to one. Cormorant out of a Prince John mare. <laughs> Miss Diana A. Sabine Stable, Joe Greeley, Bobby Barbera, and Chavez. 1085, 80, 420. Hillis Lee, 460, 360. Go bid 780 to show. The three 10 exact is 58.20. Quinella 3.10, 10.3, The double, 1 and 3, 28.40. Here's the third. This is seven furlongs. They're maiden Phillies, two-year-olds. They're off. On the inside, it's Risk the House with Sea Breezer. Beads is right there in third. Then on the outside, it's Knock on Wood and Vice Lady. The two-year-old Phillies move down the back stretch, and it's Risk the House on the inside, leading it by a neck. Sea Breezer alongside is second by a length. Then it's Beads, and Knock on Wood heads apart. Vice Lady is now in fifth. 
The first quarter went in 23 and 1. On the inside, it's Risk the House, still showing the way. The lead is a half length. Sea Breezer is alongside in second by two. Then it's Beads in third by a length and a half. Vice Lady is racing fourth, and Knock on Wood is back into fifth. They move around the far turn, risk the house. On the inside, still with a short lead, Sea Breezer on the outside is second, the half mile in 46 and four. Those two are heads apart for the lead. Sea Breezer on the outside, risk the house on the inside, and Beads is right behind in third. Vice Lady is fourth as they come for the head of the stretch. In between horses, Sea Breezer on the inside, risk the house, Beads on the outside as they come for the eighth pole, and now Sea Breezer takes the lead. Risk the house on the inside is second. Beads is racing third. Then it's Vice Lady coming for the 16th pole. Sea Breezer in front now by four lengths. Beads has moved into second. Risk the house is third. It's Sea Breezer winning it by six lengths. Beads Any result but Sea Breezer over Beads would have been a tremendous upset. Sea Breezer would have been the favorite, I believe, on any kind of surface. Try on a stable. Mrs. John Lupton, Frank Mansell, training Neil Howard going along at a 50% clip here at Saratoga. Second leading rider, Jose Santos. 420, 240, 220. Beads, 3 and 220. Risk the house, 240 to show. Exact to 3, 4, really not bad. $10.60. Off the turf for the fourth. It's a mile and eight. These are three year old fillies claiming tag 75 down to seven. Jupiter Assembly on the inside and uh, Blushing Maggie on the outside. Blushing Maggie takes the lead as they head into the clubhouse turn. And then Glorious Purple between horses on the inside is Jupiter Assembly. Then it's a land to Tammy and Sun Attack. They move around the turn. Blushing Maggie is in front by three lengths now. Glorious Purple on the outside is second. It's Jupiter Assembly at the rail in third. A length and a half to a land to Tammy and Sun Attack still in fifth. The quarter went in 24 seconds as they move down the back stretch. And the leader is Blushing Maggie. Blushing Maggie is in front by three lengths. Glorious Purple and Jupiter Assembly are heads apart second and third. Then it's two lengths to a land to Tammy and Sun Attack. The half mile in 48 seconds. Blushing Maggie continues to lead it. It's Blushing Maggie by four lengths. Jupiter Assembly on the inside. Now a clear second. It's a length and a half to Glorious Purple. Sun Attack on the outside is a closer fourth. Then it's a land to Tammy in fifth. They move around the far turn. Blushing Maggie continues to show the way, but the lead now is two and a half lengths. Jupiter Assembly is second by three. Then it's Glorious Purple. Sun Attack on the inside. Farther back, it's a land to Tammy. The field is moving for the head of the stretch. Three quarters, one and one, 12 and four. They still have Blushing Maggie to catch, but on the outside, here comes Jupiter Assembly. Jupiter Assembly on the outside, puts ahead in front. Blushing Maggie on the inside. Farther back, it's Glorious Purple and Sun Attack as they pass the eighth pole. On the outside, it's Jupiter Assembly. Blushing Maggie is game on the inside, and Blushing Maggie comes back to take the lead. Blushing Maggie drawing away as they come for the line. Blushing Maggie by three and a half. Jupiter Assembly Another was the Kentucky second. Invader, and definitely the filly that benefited the most when they took the race off the turf. Classic Pat Day. He's in the lead. He waits for somebody to come to him. He looks back to make sure he's got the others behind him in check, and then he just plays Playfully runs away from the horse that's made the move to catch him. When it works, it looks great, and in this case, it worked. Michael Lauer, owner, trainer, Pat Day, blushing Maggie. 6340, 240, Jupiter Assembly, 420, 280, Glorious Purple, 240. The exact 11 and 1 is $27. Quinella 111, 11 1, 1340. success is the OBS at the sales on the track the symbol of success is the OBS the Ocala Breeders yearling sale starts Monday August 22nd get more for your yearling dollar in Ocala how do you like your college football
The Big East, the Pac-10, the SEC, plus locals Hofstra and Fordham. College football on Sports Channel kicks off Saturday, September 3rd. Here's the fifth race today. This is a sprint. Phillies and Mass three and up. Claiming tags 35 down to 30. By Nikki's Rose. They're at the head of the stretch. The half and 45 and two. Promised Relic turns for home with a three-length lead. Tuesday edition. Trying to gain ground on the outside. Farther out, it's Unreal Cupcake. Then it's Hang Glider. Nikki's Rose gains ground between horses. They're coming for the 16th pole. Promised Relic under the whip. Nikki's Rose coming strong at the end. Nikki's Rose on the outside gets the lead as they hit the line. Nikki's Rose wins it by. This is one of the long shots in the race, and deservedly so, Nikki's Rose. But supposing we had told you that right after the fifth race, we're going to make the presentation to the leading owner down at Belmont Park at our last meeting. The leading owner, Joke Farm. They own this one, too, and I believe they won the opener. Nikki's Rose, same people. Gaspar Mochera, Shane Sellers. 21-60, and 5. Promise Relic, 380-320. Tuesday edition, 440. And they didn't have to come back. They were right there for the presentation. The 1-6, 63-20. Here's the sixth off the turf. Now a mile and three sixteenth on the main. Three-year-olds and up. Now one is a two, other than Maiden claiming a starter. On the outside, Sirius Spender goes right to the front. Sirius Spender in front, Sir Wollaston. Whitney Towers, Suze Dahl, Bermuda Cedar all heads apart. Then it's Warm Wayne, followed by United Congress. And the trailer is Majestico as they move around the clubhouse turn. Sirius Spender in front by a length and a half. Sir Wollaston on the inside, Suze Dahl on the outside, heads apart second and third. Farther out is Bermuda Cedar in fourth. And Whitney Tower racing fifth, a gap of four to Warm Wayne in sixth. Then it's United Congress and Majestico. The quarter in 23 and 1 as they move down the back stretch. Sirius Spender is in front by a length and a half. Bermuda Cedar, Whitney Tower. And on the inside is Sir Wollaston. Their heads apart, then a gap of three to Suzdal. Two more to Warm Wayne, then United Congress and Majestico. The half mile in 47 and one. Sirius Spender in front by a length and a half. Sir Wollaston on the inside, gains ground between horses. Whitney Tower is right there. Bermuda Cedar has dropped back into fourth. Then it's a gap of four to Suzdal, followed by Majestico. Farther back is Warm Wayne. They're moving around the far turn. It is Sirius Spender in front by three and a half lengths. Sir Wollaston is racing second. As they come for the head of the stretch, Sirius Spender turns for home with a three length lead. Gaining ground on the outside is a warm Wayne. Sir Wollaston on the inside, then it's Majestico. They're coming for the 16th pole. Sirius Spender is in front. Warm Wayne is racing second. It's going to be Sirius Spender, wire to wire under Jorge Chavez, winning it here by five. Warm not Wayne everybody's was second. unhappy Sir when Wollaston a race comes turn. off the turf. Certainly not Sirius Spender and his connections. He's been taken off the turf twice up here at Saratoga. Wins them both. That's Sirius. Spender, John Caputo, Dominic Chitino, Jorge Chavez, 660-420-320, Warm Wayne, 540-420, Sir Wollaston, $4 to show. The exact 9-4, 40-40. Seventh race is six and a half for longs, two-year-olds, now when it's a race other than maiden or claiming. Deputy Bodman breaks well. Deputy Bodman goes right to the front. And it's Deputy Bodman by three lengths in the early going. Sierra Diablo races second. Fay True is third. And Wild Escapade is fourth as they move down the back stretch. Deputy Bodman in front. The lead is now a length. Sierra Diablo and Fay True heads apart second and third. Then it's two and a half to Wild Escapade in fourth. The quarter in 22 and three. Deputy Bodman between horses on the inside is Faye True. On the outside, Sierra Diablo. Then it's a gap of about seven lengths to Wild Escapade. They're moving around the far turn. 
Sierra Diablo on the outside. On the inside is Deputy Bodman. They're heads apart for the lead, and they've opened up four lengths on Faye True. Farther back is Wild Escapade. The half mile in 45 and 3 as they hit the head of the stretch. It's Sierra Diablo on the outside. And on the inside is Deputy Bodman. They're heads apart for the lead as they come for the eighth pole. And Sierra Diablo has the lead now. Sierra Diablo in front now by two lengths. Deputy Bodman is second. Farther back, Faye True is third. Sierra Diablo lengthening his lead here as they come for the line. Sierra Diablo drawing away, winning it by 10. Deputy Bodman ran in a stake out at Hollywood Park. Would he like an off track? Well, maybe. He's by Conquistador Cielo. The board said he would, the ride said he would, and the horse said he would. He wins for fun. Heavy favorite deservedly so on paper. Sierra Diablo, Robert Lewis, Mark Henning, and Pat Day picks up another winner. 340-280 and out. Deputy Bodeman, 440 and out. Fade True out. Pick three, the old 196, $140. The Daily Racing Form Thoroughbred Action, brought to you by the Daily Racing Form, America's turf authority for 100 years running. In honor of the 100th anniversary of Daily Racing Form, Caesars Atlantic City presents the greatest horses, owners, trainers, jockeys, and racers of all time. And now they're available to you with a 100 years of racing trading card set. Packaged in this authentic centennial tin, each card commemorates the racing highlight of the year, every year for the past 100 years. Complete set with Centennial Tin, only $25. Call 1-800-208-4333. This offer is limited. Call 1-800-208-4333. Since the August yearling sale of 1990, Mockingbird Farm homebreds have won an Eclipse Award and millions for their owners. And thus far in 1994, the Mockingbird Farm homebreds have continued their winning ways. The good news is... And they can be yours for the bidding at the OBS August yearling sale. So be in Ocala Monday, August 22nd for the annual Mockingbird Farm consignment. Mockingbird Farm, we take you to the winner's circle. The eighth race today, a mile and three sixteenths, also off the turf. He's a three and up. Now one is a three other than Maiden claiming a starter. Aaron Du, Ruben Hernandez, Champagne Affair, Jerry Bailey, Palace Pipers out. And not for love, Mike Smith, Turnbridge Wells, John Velasquez, St. Elias, Pat Day. Uh, committee chairman, Eddie Maple, and the bottom two are scratched. Going for the lead is Tunbridge Wells and Not For Love, Aaron Dew down on the inside. Then on the outside, it's St. Elias and committee chairman. The early trailer is Champagne Affair as the field moves for the clubhouse turn. Aaron Dew on the inside, Tunbridge Wells on the outside. Those two heads apart for the lead. A gap of two and a half to Not For Love in third. The first quarter went in 23 and four. Tunbridge Wells on the outside, now takes the lead. Aaron Dew is second, Not For Love is third. A gap of four to committee chairman, St. Elias, and Champagne Affair. They straighten away for the run down the back stretch. It is Tunbridge Wells in front by a length. Not For Love and Aaron Dew are heads apart, second and third. And then it's a gap of three lengths to committee chairman, Champagne Affair, and St. Elias. The half mile one in 48 and one. Tunbridge Wells once again gets the lead. Tunbridge Wells by three quarters of a length. Aaron Dew is second, not for love. Gains ground on the outside from third. Then it's committee chairman, St. Elias and Champagne Affair. Three quarters went in 112 and two. They're midway around the far turn. Tunbridge Wells with a short lead. Not for love continues to gain on the outside. Not for love takes the lead as they come for the head of the stretch. Aaron Dew is gained again to move into second. Tunbridge Wells is back into third. They're at the head of the stretch. 
Not for love on the outside with the lead. Arundu races second. Tunbridge Wells is back into third. Then it's St. Elias as they hit the eighth pole. Not for love is in front now by two and a half. Arundu has switched to the outside as they come for the 16th pole. It's Not For Love in front. Arundu with one late move on the outside, but it's going to be Not For Love in front, winning at a half length. Arundu was second. This cult back. is bred to swim, and swim he does, Not For Love. Had never been this far, but we've already seen that mean nothing to Mr. McGahee. But horse on the rail, Arundu broke its maiden on the dirt, a mile and eighth at Hialeah. Might have been a different race if this horse hadn't been stuck inside. Once his rider, Ruben Hernandez, gets him off, responds readily but runs out of ground not for love ogden mills fifth shug mcgahee mike smith 583 80 240 iron do 583 saint elias 240 to show the exact of four ones 47 20 the instant double in there the six four 11 80. Now the big run today. This is the 53rd running of the New York Turf Riders. $100,000 added, two and three-eighths of a mile. It is a steeplechase. Uh, the entry of uh, F.B. Miller, Darby Sky, Peter Niven, Lonesome Glory, Blythe Miller, and Cheering News, uh, Peter Fout trains that one. Peter Walsh is up. Uh, the Jonathan Sheppen entry, Belange with Joseph Delosier, Mystico with Craig Thornton. And the uh, other entry, the third entry here, I'm trying to get the Janet Elliott has Mr. McGrath, Sean Clancy, Victorian Hill, Jeff Teeter, and Warm Spell on the outside with James Lawrence. By Lonesome Glory and Warm Spell. They're all up and over that fence. The leader is Cheering News, and now Mystico making a move between horses. Mystico going up to challenge for the lead. Cheering News on the inside is second. Victorian Hill is third. Then it's Master McGrath. And they're all over that fence. Less than one lap to go. On the inside, cheering news. Mystico on the outside. Heads apart for the lead. They've opened up four lengths on Darby Sky, who's now third. Then on the outside, it's Victorian Hill, followed by Master McGrath. Then it's Belange, Lonesome Glory, and Warm Spell, who won this race last year, is still eighth and last. They're on the back stretch the final time. On the inside, cheering news, Mystico right alongside. Mystico now puts ahead in front. Cheering news is second. Darby Sky is racing third. Then it's Master McGrath in fourth, followed by Belange, Warm Spell, Lonesome Glory, and Victorian Hill is now the trailer. Heading for that fence. And they're all over it. On the inside is Cheering News. On the outside is Mystico. They still race as a team into the far turn. Darby Sky is in third. Then it's a gap of some seven lengths back to Lonesome Glory. Warm spell on the outside. They're moving for the head of the stretch. Mystico on the outside. On the inside is Cheering News. Darby Sky is third. They're coming for the final fence in this New York Turf Riders Cup. Mystico has the lead. Coming to that last fence, Mystico is up and over. Cheering News is racing second. They're coming down for the finish line. Mystico is in front. Cheering News is second. Coming for the line, it's gonna be Mystico to win the Turf Riders Cup by four lengths. Cheering News was second. And second Looks to like warm spell in a prep for this race over the soft turf. Comes back today obviously needed that one and advances enough to win it. People thought Jonathan Shepard, at least by his standards, hasn't been having a great meeting up here at Saratoga. But if you look, this one's $100,000, the New York Turf Riders, and the trainer is Jonathan Shepard. R.D. Hubbard, the owner, Mystico, Craig Thornton aboard. 6 2 60 and out. The 1 and 1A, 1X and 1A are second and third. Cheering News, 280 and out. Lonesome Glory finished third. The exact double, I'm sorry, the 4 2 21 20. Now we move on to the finale today, a sprint for three-year-old fillies, 25 down to 20 tags. Sign a night, Diane Nelson, Mighty Jenny's out, he'll raise the Alvarado. I'm in the mood for love, David Burns, Iron Maiden, Jean Velasquez, Lori's Folly, Dale Beckner. Petaluma Girl, Steve Radowski, Don Juan's gal, Mike Luzzi, Silvery Lady, Pat Day. Terra Ruber, Ruben Hernandez, Day Rate, Chavez, Sugarfoot, and Eddie Maple on the favorite. And they're off. 
Sugar footing on the extreme outside. From between horses, Silvery Lady and Terra Rubra. I'm in the mood for love is down on the inside. Then Day Raid is racing fourth. Don Juan's gal in fifth. Hill Razor sixth. Sinonite is seventh. Sugar footing is back into eighth. And Iron Maiden in ninth. Lori's Folly is tenth. And Petaluma Girl is eleventh. Terra Rubra has the lead. I'm in the mood for love is second on the outside. Day Raid is third. They've opened up five lengths on Sugarfoot and Hill Razor has gained some ground on the inside. Silvery Lady is dropping back. Iron Maiden gains a bit of ground on the outside. Sinonite moves up on the rail. Lori's Folly is gaining ground way on the outside as they move forward ahead of the stretch. Day Raid, I'm in the mood for love, heads apart. Gaining ground is Sugar Footin in the middle of the track. Far outside, it's Lori's Folly. It's I'm in the mood for love with the lead. Sugar Footin is racing second. Lori's Folly is third. Sinonite is next. Then Hill Razor coming for the 16th pole. I'm in the mood for love trying to hold on. A late move here from Sugar Footin coming down for the line. I'm in the mood for love. Sugar Footin, I'm in the mood for love. Held on to win it by a nose. Sugar this one has to be a Cinderella story. Jockey David Burns lives about 45 miles in Saratoga comes in here to exercise horses. He's looking back. He sees Eddie Maple coming at him. Where's the line, says David Burns on this long shot? And he gets to the line in time. Uh, this is, I, uh, let me see, check this again. This is uh, Lorraine Rowe, Walter Miller. Lorraine Rowe trains this horse. David Burns is aboard, and this is really big balloons, and I hope you're in the mood for love. This one returns 76, 20, 30, and 8, 20. Sugarfoot in the favorite, five and three dollars. Lori's Folly, 380 to show. The back wheel of the favorite, the old 412, 905, 60. The late double two four four twenty nine eighty. The triple 412, 6, $4,527. Get the pick six up there as fast as we can because we're in here now. I got to get the pick six. 45 tickets. All you needed was the Jock Farm 2073. Five correct 989 tickets. They received $31. And there's the jockey standings. Jerry Bailey still in front, didn't do well today. Mike Smith, two behind. Jose Santos, four behind. Well, this was a, an interesting day for sure. I believe, and I could be wrong about this, that trainer Lorraine Rowe has won a three, four races over the years that I've been watching, and it seems to me every one of them was on an off track. I may be wrong, but David Burns, he has to be a very excited man, came in here, didn't know what hit him, won the race, and that was a real good ending for you, and let's hope we can have a better weather for the rest of the week, and we'll see you tomorrow. Good night. May the horse be with you. Today's first. We got them. In the National Charts Weekly, the essential tool for multi track handicappers. Weekly charts from seven major tracks, North American and European stakes recaps, a week in review editorial a convenient horse index, and more. From daily racing form, of course. Order your subscription today. Call 1-800-283-2459. The National Charts Weekly. It pays to know the score. A thoroughbred farm is like any other sports franchise. Well, again, slow and go. You've got the proven veterans. But it's still Seattle. And you got the promising rookies. Even when you got the talent, there's always building that team that never stops. Our biggest fans are our clients, and we've got to perform for them every day. And that's why I can say to every client of this farm, at Three Chimneys, the focus is your success. Tracks muddy to start, no turf rate, rather sloppy to start. We upgraded to muddy a little bit later in the day. This is five and a half furlongs made in two-year-old state breads. Over Phil as they come to the quarter pole. Phil over Phil in front by a length. Conk Republic is in between horses. Second on the outside. That is uh, Culloden Shore running in third. Billy the Bid is now fourth. And they're coming to the eighth pole. It's still Phil over Phil under a drive and leading by a length and a half. Conk Republic is running greenly. Then it's Billy the Bid. Culloden Shore on the outside. Larchmont is closing stoutly at the inside. We'll have to catch Phil over Phil who will come down to the line of winner. Phil over Phil by two and a half. 
Larch Bunkin. Congratulations to Phil Ruggiero Jr. and trainer Thomas Marini. They revved up this $7,000 New York bread yielding in Atlantic City, shipped it up here, got lucky. They got Chavez, they got the money. 11 46 and 440. Number two, uh, Larchmont second, 10 67 20. Country Republic all crazy in the stretch, 620 to show. The one twos, 144 20. Second's the first of the off the turfers for the day. It's a mile and a 16th, now a mile and an eighth. These are made in Phillies and Mares, three and up. and those two are head-to-head -head coming to the top of the stretch. Five lengths back to Serene Beauty and Snobbet. Farther back, Rihanna Vestingeta as the field turns for home. Matra's under the whip. Nobody picks six coming hard. Those two together with three sixteenths from the finish, but nobody picks six is pulling away. Nobody picks six by three at the eighth pole. Leaving Matra and the rest behind. Serene Beauty and I would say that uh, Tom Durkin was stealing nobody pick six, but since I originally stole it from him about 10, 12 years ago. We'll let him get away with it. Finally breaks her maiden, the Clarvitz stable, Gary Stiaker. Chavez sweeps the early double. Nobody picks six. 422-40-220. Uh, Matra is second, 280-240. Finishing third, Serene Beauty, 260. Exact to 76-1240. Quinella, 677-6740. The uh, Chavez double, 17-2960. A warning now in this third race, a filly is going to break down in the back stretch. Turn away if you don't want to see it. It's a bad one. Five furlongs, maiden filly, two-year-olds. And they're off. Verdant Valley comes out running in as hard ridden and gets the lead. El Diablo second on the inside, but Megastorm is there third. Lily Capote is kept close fourth. Then it's Lori Lauren Rain Dance at the back of the pack. Verdant Valley takes the field into the far turn, the leader length. The hot favorite Megastorm is second on the outside. El Diablo tails off into third. On the outside, Rain Dance is hard ridden fourth and uh, stumbling there, unseating the jockey Megastorm. Megastorm uh, stumbled and unseated jockey Craig Perrette. That has left uh, Verdant Valley with a clear lead of uh, three lengths as they turn for home. And then El Diablo on the inside second. Lily Capote is third on the outside, followed by Rain Dance now fourth. And they are inside the final furlong, and Verdant Valley leads the way by two and a half lengths as they come past the 16th pole with El Diablo and Lily Capote uh, second and third. Under the line, uh, Verdant Valley scores by two and a half. I had to turn away myself. I couldn't watch this again. This Philly Megastorm, a half to buy a Coa, going off at even money. She was supposed to be a beauty. You saw what happened to her. She was set down, put down. She was destroyed. Craig Perrette, okay. That makes you just so, it ruins an entire day. Verdon Valley wins it. Mrs. Thomas Voss, Tom Voss, the trainer, Kruger is aboard. 1540, 660, 360. Uh, El Diablo, uh, $684. The other one's supposed to be good. For, uh, Lucas's horse, Lily Capote, 260 to show. Free one exact, $100.40. Off the turf again for the fourth. Now a mile and an eighth. These are uh, three-year-olds and up, claiming tags 80 down to 75. And they're off. Sedance hustled away from the gate. Final sunrise is there. Versado three wide, bonus award four wide as Shower of Silver tucks away in behind them. Into the first turn and Sedance has established the lead. They're three quarters of a length. On the outside, final sunrise is pressing the pacemaker second by two, then Versato and bonus award running off the rail fourth. A big break back to Shower of Silver who is allowed to trail the field in the early going. It was a quick first quarter over the slop, 23 seconds flat. Sadance continues to blaze the way into the back stretch. Final Sunrise continues in hot pursuit. Three and a half lengths back, and Versato is kept within striking range third. Another four or five. Back to Bonus Award, trying to take hold of the track. And an even bigger break back to the trailer, Shower of Silver, who's better than 12 lengths from the lead. A 46 and two half mile demanding fractions here, set by Sadance, the leader with a half mile to run. Still there by length and a half. Final Sunrise has been chasing throughout. Versato is getting closer. Another eight lengths back to Bonus Award, who's toiling at the back of the pack. And Shower of Silver now. Shower of Silver beginning to hit his best stride. They're moving toward the top of the stretch. It's final sunrise on the outside. Sadance toward the inside. Versato is there, but moving best of them all is Shower of Silver. 
who was well behind earlier, is now only three lengths from the lead. And they're at the top of the stretch. Sedan's final sunrise, shower of silver, out for the final furlong third. Persito is fourth. They're at the eighth pole. Final sunrise is forged to a short lead. Sedan is battling bravely at the inside. Shower of silver giving his all. The three of them headlong to the wire. Shower of silver surging on the outside. In between horses, final... Well, there go two things. Somebody told me you can't come from way back on this racetrack. I think Shower of Silver almost lost touch with the field down the backstretch. Julie Crone hustles the horse up, going to get the money. And somebody else said to me, what's happened to our New England shippers? We're not winning anything. Well, Michael Downing has ended your, your drought as he brings home Shower of Silver. Charles Murphy, Jr., the owner. Shower of Silver returns 2045-8260. Second final sunrise, 420-240. Third Sedance, 220 to show. 10 fives, $88. The Quinella 510, 10 5, 32, 40. Barry Irwin and Jeff Siegel's Team Valor, which last season brought star of Cozine East for a memorable series of matches with Breeders' Cup hero Lure, is back with a new star of the turf in Zuno Star, exciting winner of the Grade 2 $150,000 Jersey Derby. From coast to coast and in between, America Stable, this season already has five graded stakes winners. Out west, the Grade 1 mayor, Lady Blessington, won Santa Anita's Grade 3 Buena Vista handicap. In the east, Santa Catalina won Goldstream's graded Shirley Jones and First Lady Handicaps. And Samba Carioca led a 1-2 Team Valor finish in the graded Joe Namath Handicap at Goldstream. In the Midwest, Breeders' Cup bound Demelu Demashoot ran six furlongs in a record 108 and 1 fifth to win Oaklawn's $150,000 Count Fleet Handicap. Team Valor, General Partnerships, 800-734-5660. Team Valor, 11 stake sources, 10 of them graded in 1994. Here's the fifth today. This is seven furlongs, maiden two-year-olds. Mounting his challenge for the lead. Silent Cherokee has dropped back to third. Jackson levels off, and here comes Jackson on the outside. Exemplar is fifth as the field turns for home. Mr. Greeley is under a heavy drive and still holds on to the lead. Top account is full out under a left-handed whip, and Jackson is third. In mid-stretch, it's still Mr. Greeley full out, fully extended to try to hold off. The on-rushing top account, top account, Mr. Greeley, stride for stride. Top account takes the lead. It's top account, a link on the line. Mr. Greeley second by about 10. This is a talented youngster. It almost looked like he wasn't handling the track at two or three times during the race, but Pat Day was able to rouse him, and when roused, he took off. Will Farish, Neil Howard, and Pat Day. Top account, 463, 220. Uh, Silent Cherokee, uh, or Mr. Greeley, I don't remember. I think Mr. Greeley finishes second. 340, 240, and number eight, Jackson is third, 220 to show. The nine ones, 1940. Here's the six. This is six and a half furlongs, two-year-old fillies, non-winners of a race other than Maiden or Claiming. They're off. Susan's Choice comes out fast, and so does Clever Thing, and down toward the inside, Cool Change. Up the back stretch, Cool Change gets to the lead. Clever Thing second on the outside, Cool Change sprinting away from the field, Cool Change by three and a half. Susan's Choice, second on the inside, Clever Thing, third by three, Duhush, fourth, pretty discreet, running in fifth, Conquistadores between horses, also between horses, it's Grand Charmer, and Nice Sight at the back of the pack. Cool Change the leader through a quarter of 21 and three-fifths seconds a sizzling first quarter there by Cool Change, who's the leader around the turn by a length and a half on the outside. Clever Thing is running in second. Here comes Pretty Discreet now with her rally up into third. Susan's Choice is back to fourth. Do 
two ushers, six lengths from the lead, along with Grand Charmer. Coming to the top of the stretch, Cool Change ran a half in 45 and one. Still leads as they turn for home. Cool Change by two. Susan's Choice trying to come off the rail. Grand Charmer coming on through in between horses. Pretty discreet is there on the outside. Clever thing. And now Cool Change has stopped badly, and it's Pretty Discreet who has a short lead. Clever thing right there with her toward the inside. Grand Charmer, Pretty Discreet coming down to the line, and Pretty Discreet has it by two at the wire. Private account, Phillies win the fifth and sixth race. If you ignored her Skylerville, she was the fastest horse in the race. Apparently, you should have ignored it because today she runs extremely well. Iron P, Rob Sham, Red Terrell, and Jerry Bailey. Pretty Discreet going to get the money here. She returns 980, 640, and four. Clever Thing runs back to her good slop race in call that gets the place. 14, 25, 80. Uh, number eight, Grand Charm, a 320. Seven, six is $119. Here's the seven. This is seven furlongs, fillies and mares, three and up. Now one is a three other than. And they're off. Libby Lee is going for the lead. In between horses, Pam Zig coming up now. It's Pam Zig getting ahead in front. On the outside, Libby Lee is there, followed by Footing, then Ima, then a break of six lengths back to Confidentially. Personal Girl is the trailer. Up the back stretch. It's Pam Zig on the inside and Libby Lee on the outside, and they are matching strides on the lead, head to head through an opening quarter of 22 and one, with Footing chasing them third. Just in behind that one, it's Ima fourth, and a big break back to Confidentially. And Personal Girl passing the half-mile pole. Libby Lee resting a short lead from Pam Zig. It's Libby Lee in front by a neck. On the inside, Pam Zig giving her all, but tailing off just a bit. Then a break of five. Back to Ima, who's trying to come through an opening toward the inside. To her outside, it's footing now running in fourth. Libby Lee shakes loose from Pam Zig, but had to run a half in 44 and three to do it. Turning for home, Libby Lee has opened up a four-length lead. Footing is full out on the extreme outside. Con Confidentially is coming up the rail, full of run, passing the eighth pole. Libby Lee under a hard drive. Jerry Bailey is all over her. But here comes Confidentially, coming powerfully into second. Ima's not done yet on the outside. They're coming down to the line. Here comes Confidentially to grab a short lead. Ima surges past to win. Ima has it. It's close for seven. Want to watch a crazy race. Run this one back for your VCR. Libby Lee looks like she's home. Nobody's going to catch Libby Lee. Now he comes the six confidentially she's surely going to win the race about to collar libby lee now here comes imar from way back she's going to win the whole race and pam zig the horse that was put away by libby lee is coming again at the end to get fourth it's a great game the winner is imar the joran stable and uh excuse me joe desposito paulina ortez the trainer 32 860 and 32 20, 860 and five. Second, libby lee 443 20 confidentially didn't even get second she's third three eight to show. Two fours, 12380, pick three, 972, $778. The Daily Racing Form Thoroughbred Action. Brought to you by the Daily Racing Forum, America's turf authority for 100 years running. If you want to play at the track, you've got to get Playing to Win, the all-new, fun-to-watch, easy-to-understand handicapping video from America's Turf Authority Daily Racing Forum. Host Bob Newmeyer takes you inside the track, talks to key players, and shows you how the pros pick their winners. Past performances, speed figures, workout patterns, and breeding angles are just a few of the helpful handicapping tips that can really pay off. Playing to Win will take you to the front. Call 1-800-208-4333 today to order your very own copy. The symbol of success is the OBS. At the sales, on the track, the symbol of success is the OBS. 
The Ocala Breeders Yearling Sale starts Monday, August 22nd. Get more for your yearling dollar in Ocala. Since the August Yearling Sale of 1990, Mockingbird Farm homebreds have won an Eclipse Award and millions for their owners. And thus far in 1994, the Mockingbird Farm homebreds have continued their winning ways. The good news is there are more where these came from and they can be yours for the bidding at the OBS August Yearling Sale. So be in Ocala Monday, August 22nd for the annual Mockingbird Farm consignment. Mockingbird Farm, we take you to the winner's circle. Now, more than ever, you can own quality thoroughbred racehorses. Racing's hottest stable, LSI Gold, introduces the most innovative concept in racing today, affordable thoroughbred general partnerships. Right now, LSI Gold is among the leading owners in races won and purses earned. LSI Gold's formula for success is simple. Select development and training of potential high-earning sound thoroughbreds. Remember, the time to call LSI Gold is now, because winning is everything. Remember that, 7.30 tomorrow night. Here's the, another off the turf from mile and eighth now for Phillies and Mass, three and up, now winners of two. Uh, Fli Flitty Frosty, Eddie Maple, eye catchings out, Bobby Com, Craig Perrette, Verbal Intrigue, Dennis Carr, Silly's Phillies out, Win a Lot, Bonnie's out. Uh, Black Beans and Rice, Jerry Bailey, Great Lady Mary, Jean Kruger, Even Money Favorite, Joy of Ireland with Pat Day, the last three are gone. And they're off. Verbal intrigue, there goes Great Lady Mary. Down inside, Flirty Frosty is there. Joy of Ireland, well out into the track as they move for the first turn. Flirty Frosty up to take the lead. Great Lady Mary second on the outside. Verbal intrigue hugs the fence. And in between horses, Black Beans and Rice. Farthest out into the course, it's Joy of Ireland is now moving up toward the lead, and well behind the rest is Bobby Com. The first quarter goes in 24 seconds flat. Into the back stretch now. On the inside, it's Flirty Frosty with a short lead. On the outside, Great Lady Mary is right there. Black Beans and Rice along the rail, now tucked away in third. Joy of Ireland has settled in fourth now. In behind that group, it's Verbal Intrigue. And a break of about five, back to Bobby Com, who lags behind. Up the back stretch. The uh, half mile went in 48 and 2 over the muddy track. The leader is still Flirty Frosty. Great Lady Mary is in hand alongside second. Joy of Ireland, the favorite, right there, laying just off the lead third with the half mile to run. Black Beans and Rice is now back to fourth. Verbal Intrigue is fifth, about four and a half lengths from the lead. Bobby Com has trailed throughout, and they're midway round the far turn. Flirty Frosty still in front. Great Lady Mary now is called on for more run, but Flirty Frosty gets away way now by a length and a half. Black Beans and Rice is third toward the inside. Joy of Ireland. Bobby Com, who is dormant in the early going, is coming fast on the outside. The field turns for home. Flirty Frosty in front. Bobby Com, full of run. Bobby Com last on the back stretch, first at the eighth pole. And then it's Flirty Frosty, now running second. Farther back, it's Black Beans and Rice third, and Verbal Intrigue is fourth, and they're coming down to the finish. It was a patient Craig Perez with Bobby Com to win by three at the end. Flirty Frosty, the pacemaker. Craig Perrette, who was aboard the ill-fated Megastorm in the third race, comes back with a winner here. Another move from way back by Bobby Com. You can see she was in full gear on the turn. She sustains the drive and wins going away. James B. Taffel, Carl Napska, Craig Perrette, Bobby Com. Incidentally, in this race, eloping, number 10, was a relatively late scratch. So if you use that horse in the pick six, not in the pick six, in doubles or exactors or whatever, Remember, you got a refund coming. Bobby Com returns 1465, 60, and 4. Uh, Fl Flirty Frosty, 48420. Black Beans and Rice, $5. The exacta, 315420. Now we come to the 16th running of the Grade 1 Ballerina Handicap. Seven furlongs, Phillies and Mares, three and up. There is an entry here. Shug McGay sending out Educated Risk with Jerry Bailey, Roman Racial, Pat Day. Penny's reshoot scratched. Twist the Fleet, Mike Smith, Classy Mirage, Dooley Crone, Deputy Jane West, Craig Perrette for All Seasons, Eddie Maple. And they're off. 
Classy Mirage comes out first. Classy Mirage getting to a short early lead, but there goes Twist the Fleet, flashing her speed to take the lead. Now it's Twist the Fleet in front. Mike Smith trying to harness her speed. Classy Mirage will match strides with her. An educated risk is just in behind the running third. For all seasons is fourth on the outside. Deputy Jane West is fifth. Then a break of five back to Roman Rachel, who will be the early trailer. Up the back stretch, Twist the Fleet and Classy Mirage through a quarter head to head in 22 and 2 educated risk in full pursuit now and Jerry Bailey calls on educated risk for more run a break of three lengths back to four all seasons running fourth then far the back on the inside deputy Jane West Roman Rachel now hitting her best stride as they near the top of the stretch the half went in 44 and 3 it's been twist the fleet and classy mirage head to head the whole way and they turn for home together twist the fleet down toward the rail Classy Mirage on the outside. Inseparable coming to mid-stretch. For all seasons is roused and comes on now into third. And Roman Rachel is coming hard on the outside. Inside the furlong marker. Twist the fleet full out. Classy Mirage. Roman Rachel coming hard. Here comes Roman Rachel who takes the lead. 20 yards from the wire to win it. Classy Ballerina is always a good race. And once uh, Twist the Fleet, the three-year-old, locks horns with Classy Mirage in a speed duel, it's probably going to be Roman Rachel if she gets the right move and takes the track. She's been on a wet track once. She won that one time going seven. She was the stronger half of Suge's entry, and she's also the winner. Try on a stable, Salvador de Bunduk, Suge McGahee, and Pat Day. Roman Rachel, 6'2", 10 Finishing second, Classy Mirage, 322 10 Also surviving the speed duel to get third. The Three-year-old twist of fleet 210. The exact the one four, seventeen dollars and forty cents. Finale's a mile and eight, three-year-olds and up. Claiming tags 25 to 20. The 101A are out. To the twist, Jerry Bailey. Electrojet, Mike Smith. Two Wise Chavez. Established Lie Leon. Charming Buck Santos. Sylvester Stone, Migliori. Voted Glory's out. Draw point Shane Sellers, Border Cat Dale Beckner. And they're off established lie out quickly on the outside Sylvester Stone is there to the twist is under the whip racing for the first turn established lie on the outside to the twist up from the rail to grab the lead two wise is just in behind him now running in third Sylvester Stone on the far outside fourth electro jet fifth toward the inside charming buck is saving ground in sixth position draw point between horses seventh border cat on the outside into the back stretch to the twist gets the quarter in 23 and two and leads by two lengths established lie in hot pursuit second by three two wise is kept close to the pace running in third electro jet being nudged along at the inside and fourth then sylvester stone border cat charming buck and at the back draw point up the back stretch it's still to the twist established lie getting a bit closer second by four electro jet third toward the inside two wise alongside him the half mile went in 47 seconds flat farther back sylvester stone now about nine lengths from the lead then and border cat charming buck draw point at the back and at the half mile pole established lie overtakes to the twist and opens up by length and a half established lie driving on the lead midway on the turn and then it's to the twist running in second electro jet is now third and on the inside sylvester stone is coming sharply now and he's moving toward the leaders five lengths from the front two eyes is back running in fifth position at the back are charming buck who's coming up the inside he's hitting his best stride charming Buck switch to the outside for the run into the stretch. Border Cat had to check at the top of the lane. They're coming to mid stretch. It's now Electro Jet in front. Established lie is back running in second. Charming Buck on the far outside has moved into third. And then it's to the twist fourth. Electro Jet at the 16th pole, a length and a half. On the inside, established lie. Charming Buck on the outside. Here's the line. Electro Jet a length and a half. Very tight for second. Some reason last time out, Electro Jet got hooked up in a ridiculous speed duel that's not the way this horse likes to run today it gets the kind of trip it likes sitting in contention but not on the lead going to run by them and allow mike smith and jerry bailey each pick up a winner on the day and hold the race pretty much exactly where it was barbara davis gaspa mochera electro jet 
That's the photo for place. Uh, Charming Buck getting it by a nose. Electrojet 680, 4280. Charming Buck 880 and 480. Established lie who took the lead. Looked like a winner and then hung $7 to show. Exacta 36 is 7020. Triple 365, $1,147. The late double uh, 1328. Pick six today was nigh on to impossible. But watch what one winner got. Let's take a look at this. Let's not take a look at this, but let's take a look at this. There it is. New body pick six is no longer a maiden. Five correct, one winner. 39,276. I've seen whole pools pay less than that. Carry over. Travers Day, $118,000, just about. Let's look at those jockey standings. Bailey and Smith holding even, 29-27. Santos, 24. Crone, 19. And Migliori, 12. Steve Christ is not here today. He is home working on that court for tomorrow's paddock club. He said that. He said, I gotta go home and do my handicapping. So you'll be able to pick up Steve tomorrow at 12 in the paddock club. Show is on tomorrow night at 7.30. I don't have to tell you why. Tomorrow is an event day. If you're here tomorrow, don't complain. It's Travers Day and you were there. Holy Bull, Tabasco Cat, you were there. Good night. May the horse be with you. SunDebt International, still leading the way west with low airfares. On SunDebt, you can fly from New York via Newark to Los Angeles from just $129 each way. And New York to Dallas on SunDebt from just $99 each way. Call 1-800-4-SUNDEBT to reserve your seat. The City of Stars from just $129. The Lone Star from just $99. SunDebt, we've got your ticket to the Stars, too. Call 1-800-4-SUNDEBT. A week, a month, the rest of the season, who knows when the strike will end. But remember, for as long as it lasts, Sports Channel will deliver the action you want. In August, catch Mets minor league ball with the Norfolk Tides and the Binghamton Mets. Plus, new editions of baseball's greatest games, featuring Seaver's 300th win and the Mets clinching the 86 NL East. For more Mets news, it's Modell's inside pitch and Rusty Staub at the plate. Plus, get breaking strike news with hourly new sport reports. During the strike, stick with Sports Channel. Saturday, Steffi Graf leads a field of world-class tennis players in the semifinals of the Canadian Open. Live Saturday at noon on Sports Channel. The following presentation is made possible through the generous support of 9X and Revlon. You have to go to believe it. It is just so wonderful. It's kind of like an inspiration. It becomes a passion. It was just one of the most beautiful experiences I had ever had, and I've been hooked ever since. They're all winners. They're all given 110%. It's an endearing and touching thing to see.